Oh, hello, everybody. We are now live. Excellent. Yes. Hello and welcome to... Uh, blah, blah. <laughs> Sorry, completely screwed up the start. Hello and welcome to episode 74 of the Mega Vision Show, the companion podcast to Mega Visions magazine. Today is March the 7th, 2021. I'm your host, Graham Cookson, and joining, this, well, joining me this week, oh, honey, honey, how he thrills me. Aha! It's my co-host, scotty mo and the game is on is he a lover or a friend a big thing or a small the winner takes it all it's martin gulick <laughs> and together we are mega visions queen um, and abba that's what we are <laughs> oh yes absolutely <laughs> so we're back once again live on twitch so keep us company and for any questions you have in the chat and we'll get to them as soon as we can throughout the show as always we'll be having some Excellent Sega chat, a bit of general gaming chat. We'll also be answering some of your burning questions. And we have our feature discussion uh, where we'll be looking at what Sega games would make a great board game. So strap in for the ride. That is this week's Megavision Show. Yes, that's right. So, as always, we'll start with our with how our week's been. So, Scotty, let's start with you. How are you doing, my friend? I'm good. I am good. How are you guys doing? Yeah, it's very uh, good. Yeah, you know what? Not bad. Not bad at all. I, I, I was telling you guys earlier, but the cat decided to just lie down and start sleeping right behind my chair. So, <laughs> my movement of spatial movement is limited right now. Oh, no. Nice. Yeah. You're not going anywhere. Otherwise, um, pretty good. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I, uh, as with probably most of the world, finished up WandaVision. Ooh, uh, I haven't done that yet. Ah, I'm going ah, to no, try. We're going to spoil it for <laughs> no, you. No. Yeah. Uh, surprise. It's all a dream. Um, <laughs> and uh, that's that's it. No, I don't know. Yeah, we finished it. I mean, it's um, no spoilers, but I don't think there's going to be a season two. And I think they're just it's a springboard for other stuff basically you know? okay i don't think that's really spoilers because what else would you do with this show in another season really i think they uh, also called it on on the uh, disney plus if you look at the episode list they call it the series finale which means the whole thing uh, is yeah, they, yeah. yeah i hate i hate titles like that like come up with a title <laughs> oh yeah yeah that's 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 lazy so. i i um, personally i don't know how you feel but i personally hope they would have one or two more seasons i don't want it to be like one of those shows that goes on for 10 seasons but one or two right. more i don't know i just feel like that could have been really cool but oh well yeah. i mean if they could come know, up I with think... something but i think it was definitely planned to just be a catapult for their new movies like it was like mm -hmm. all right let's try and explain this story in a mini series of eight to ten episodes. I think it's eight episodes, and then you know this is where we start off. So yeah, Why yeah, not? I believe it is. Um, I think the next thing is um, uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yeah, if oh, I... yeah. that's out like in two weeks. Yeah, that that I'm more excited for. Rachel probably less so because it's definitely going to be just straight up action and explosions. <laughs> I think. Yeah. Um, isn't isn't there a, th a theory or there's a rumor going around that there could be a surprise one division episode because they've got a two week break people are like oh there could be a surprise one division episode between those two or people something people are looking too much into it i don't think yeah. so I, yeah there's i see no so indication why that would happen but i just keep yeah. hearing that so a few people at work are talking about it. i'm like really like i don't think unless they do like everything from pietro's point of view in this episode or something like that i don't see how they could do right uh, an, an additional thing all i'm gonna say is though well watch through the whole freaking credits everybody okay uh, yeah um but uh no we finished that up um just been going through Shit's creek still uh mm. and um haven't how really oh i did i've i didn't add it on the 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 docket here but i did start watching mm. the cg anime series for um oh my god i forget the name of the freaking pacific Win rim pacific oh, okay. <laughs> um yeah it's all right it's nothing special it's uh i just wanted to see what they could do with the with uh with that universe a little more so it's mm. um just follows a brother and sister and it's nothing spectacular but it's it's 
it's cool to see the rest of that world outside of just Godzilla for America. Right. You know? True. Um, yeah, it's called Pacific Rim The Black. Like okay. uh yeah, nothing to write home about. Um were you starting to say something, Graham? Probably I about was gonna I, I was gonna ask, yeah, how how's your shit creek viewing going? Uh, uh we're on season four and okay. season four starts horribly weak and it feels like uh Alexis has completely reverted back to her old self, okay. which is really annoying. So I know there are or wait, are we in five? I forget. I don't know. We watch a lot of episodes <laughs> in one sitting each time. So um, they had the Christmas party, if that means anything. I don't know what season mm, we're on. I'm trying to remember. I, <laughs> I, 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 I think season five is the last one. So I think you're the one bef- right before it. If, if you think you've seen that many episodes, you're probably on season four. I don't mm, think the Christmas maybe. episode was on um, five. But again, I also but, binge watched uh, it. They've all, yeah, they've all blurred into one for me. They all blend uh, in. Yeah. yeah. Well, it does. Uh, it doesn't help that every episode is the most anticlimactic ending, like part of the episode. It'll, <laughs> it'll be. I don't even know what. I can't even think of an example. But there's some like they the the episodes end in mid conversation sometimes. <laughs> um, that's true. Yeah. Um, so I yeah. From, from your reaction and everything you've said so far, I feel like you don't enjoy as much as myself and Chris did. No, not nearly as much no, as you do. Because um, for, for, for context, Martin and anyone watching or listening who doesn't know, when Chris was on the show like a few months ago now, um, basically I was talking about how I was watching uh, Shit's Creek and how, to me, it's like probably one of the best shows I've seen in years. In fact, I was talking to Kate about it last year and we were both like, yeah, we really used to watch that game. That was like so good. Um, and Chris was agreeing. Chris was like saying it's so good. And like, we love the character development and stuff and... And some of some of the episodes we just found freaking hilarious. And so Scotty kind of like was like, ah. but from from what you said, you kind of seems like we're both talking about it so much. May as well give it a try. But you don't seem to be so so keen. On um, it. we're watching it. I think because we're not watching anything else. Um, okay. Rachel definitely likes it more than me. It's not bad. Um, I do kind of hate how stories just do not continue. Um, right. okay. and characters disappear and they're just not spoken of and I understand that that comes with the territory of like are we going to get renewed for another season who knows we don't want to mm. make you know long term plots or anything for fear of a character just not coming back or whatever else um, there are characters that pop into screen and I'm, I'm genuinely like I don't give a crap what's <laughs> going on in this person's life Okay. Um, but uh uh, yeah there i mean there is good character there is actually character development the only thing that i legitimately hated was when and i won't give any spoilers away but when david had to make up to his significant other for being a piece of shit and all right. he did was sing a song and that just mended everything and i'm like <laughs> what the fuck are you oh, talking about that is no. not how relationships work <laughs> see to, oh to that that moment for me that was one of my highlights of the of, of that effort. Like I, I, I thought that whole right, scene for the season. So I really enjoyed that bit. Like to me, I, that was. I, like a- I will say I I am in the camp of Graham and Chris where I did enjoy it. I did cry in a couple of episodes myself okay. because yeah, I think Chris. there were some emotional bits. Um, and I I do think there's overall there is character development because they you know they do start off as these you know entitled rich people who showed up in this little town in bumfuck nowhere (laughs) um and eventually they grow and evolve uh i the i looked at i looked at these seasons and these the structure and i know what you mean scotty i think it as its own like each one has its own story in it there's an overarching story of of them getting better and and you know evolving but each one, I, I just, it's like a, for me, it felt like, like a sketch kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like the, today's bit. episode is this is what they're dealing with. And and then that's, that's it. That's the end of it. You know, there's, like I said, there's an overarching thing with, they're dating this person, this person's dating this person, and they get back together and blah, blah, blah. But that's how I see it. That's how I saw it. So I, I didn't mind, I didn't mind that structure. Yeah, and that's but, how a lot of sitcoms used to be, especially like in the nineties and stuff like friends for example one of the biggest shows ever that's kind of how it works like like more so in fact like they'd be, they'd be characters right. pop up in one episode and never spoken of again it's a self-contained like story that. and then they might yeah. have like a three episode story arc like i mean even cartoons do that you know what i mean like spider-man had a venom you know three episode arc but each episode wasn't necessarily connected you know what i yeah. mean so 
that's that's yeah. how I thought. But and and that that song moment for me personally, that was one moment that. So I never actually cried during any of the episodes, but um, there was a couple of episodes that actually I did get quite emotional. And that was one moment that was actually like, oh my god, that's like a really heartfelt thing. And I don't know that that's one moment that actually made me a bit more emotional. So. Maybe I will admit that I think they're. I, I feel like they're they the the two characters are kind of opposites. Where I'm like, how did you yeah. get with them? You know what I mean? I yeah. do get that vibe. I'm like, right, okay. like you seem like too much of an asshole. But 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 I don't know. Like it just it just end up working. I don't know. Maybe yeah. it's, and I don't know. Ma- Marcy, I don't know how you feel about this. And sorry, I know we're going off on a bit of tangent and derating a little bit. Sorry, Scotty. <laughs> but Immediately. For- <laughs> For for mm-hmm. for me, I found this could be a shit show. <laughs> I, I don't know if Marcy would agree with this, but I've I said it on the show before. Their relationship to me seems one of the most pure sort of homosexual relationships I've seen on a TV show. Like there was something about oh, it yeah. that I, would, I will that... say, like hands down, this is one of the better, if not one of the best, representations of that entire demographic that has just mm. been ignored for most of TV history. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. I mean, I agree with that. I mean, I'm I'm in a same sex relationship. If people don't know, um, but I agree that it's a good representation. I think there are other episode or series and and things that, at least in the past decade, obviously that that have done a better job. Okay. Uh, explaining it, um, yeah. because before, I mean, it was like everyone's like a promiscuous, catty, you know, kind of person. Yeah. Like like you know the, the stereotype that you see. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that either. But I feel like it's important to kind of mm. get a broader spectrum of representation uh, on TV. So, but I do like I do like the uh, do you like the show. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, I mm, that mm, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, like, <laughs> the way your... that it is right now where we are, um, it's still, Alexis is still, is again with someone that is too good for her, and <laughs> yeah. I feel like David is with someone who is too good for him. <laughs> you know, I think I'm, like, developing this in real time, but I think, like, like the whole, I mean, the whole family is, like, you know, a fish out of water, you know, like, they're right. reacting, interacting with people that are, that are, much more down to earth and have no idea, you know, the kind of lifestyle they used to live in. But that that's that's their shtick though. You know what I mean? Like that is mm-hmm. their personality. And then eventually they, you know, uh, identify more with them and I don't know if you mm-hmm. read some of the episodes with like him and and um and the mayor and, and when they were oh, at a dinner party, but like mm-hmm. they, yeah. they they develop, you know, an understanding of of this different life. But again, mm-hmm. like they were, they were created to be completely, you know, on a whole nother level of, you know, entire. Yeah, I think that I think that was um, of the season finales we've seen so far. I think that was the strongest one, uh, where they the the shits are at a dinner party for the for their anniversary, and their old hoity toity friends show up as well, and they basically yeah. tell them off and say, "These two people right here are from that podunk town that you right. hate. Have shown us more. You just." didn't give it you didn't even try to reach out to us after we lost everything so that that was cool um i got a little choked up during that speech especially because um uh, oh my god johnny johnny Mm -hmm. rose mr uh eugene levy um i feel like his character has the least progression out of anyone but when he has his highs he really does um but uh but then the the rest of that episode was so weird though because there's that party going on at the barn and then the whole family is dancing together and I'm like I guess this is something drunk parents would do right <laughs> I don't know <laughs> yeah I but mean, it was a warm fuzzy yeah. feeling that they were probably going for mm. at the yeah. end of a season so yeah um, but yeah. yeah. Oh. oh well, I'd anyway. be interested to hear your thoughts at the very end <laughs> once you finish watching it. If you do continue, because uh, yeah, we'll see yeah. how it goes. Um, I- I'm sure we'll finish it. We'll probably finish it in the next like two weeks because we usually watch like three to four episodes a night, really. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll just go into my pickups real quick. Uh, I did actually appropriately enough. Uh, this showed up. Oh, dropping stuff. I got the tabletop game mixtape <gasps> massacre. Ooh, um, oh. we actually played this when uh too many games happened the last time it happened we went over to chris's we, we were staying at chris's house me sketch um 
Marson, you were there, and or I don't, I don't think you did. You play it with us, Marson? No, because I'm like I don't remember playing Mixtape Massacre. I thought, wait, maybe, okay. maybe I don't, I don't, but how, I don't, I don't remember the you? game honestly. <laughs> not, not at all. I just have terrible memory, I guess. Okay, but yeah, I was going to ask um, you what is the what is the base of the concept of the game? But apparently, um, I played I it. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember if you play as the killers or not. Um, for those that can't see, the cover of it is a very '80s retroish thing with uh, mm. someone who's supposed to be Jason, but he has like green hair protruding from the hockey mask, and he's in a trench coat helping, holding up a knife. Um, but it is set in the town of Tall Oaks. It says a small town with a big heart, just waiting to be torn apart. Make your way through the town as one of the ten slasher archetypes, dispatching victims, collecting souvenirs, and engaging in iconic brawls, bra brawls with others. Players proving once and for all who is the baddest of the brood. So um, you play as the slashers, I guess. Uh, it came with this cool little postcard, too, um, that oh, has cool. like that classic giant font with stuff within the letters, like a mountain scene or whatever. And on the back, it just says, help me and blood. <laughs> nice. That's so, pretty cool, But um, yeah, the, we, that showed up. They were doing like a sale because I guess a director's cut's coming out. So we grabbed that oh, uh, a lot shit. cheaper. Um, hmm. And then another thing that finally showed up, Xeno Cider, yes. my copy uh -oh. of it. Uh, yeah. Turns out I forgot what version I bought, but I got the same one that Graham did in the DVD case. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you get a Did you get a poster as well, Graham? Mm, no. Wait, did I? Oh, I've got a little stick thing, but well, well yeah, I got a poster with it as well. Uh, what? From... Was what? it in the box? No, so this is I haven't I haven't opened the box yet. Oh right, I just want unboxing. Why did I ask that question? It's oh. clearly <laughs> I'm gonna Uh oh. No, I, still, I love oh, the game. So I'm gonna... the finger at him. Man. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do an unboxing for that and as a little teaser of what's gonna be involved in the boxing, here's a prop for it. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, nice. it's a helmet with spikes on it for those listening. <laughs> um Got to open that up. Going to stream that with a twin stick, so that'll be pretty cool. And then one more thing I want to show um, is I didn't do this in previous years because uh, you can, if you hit a certain landmark during Extra Life, uh, you can redeem it for certain things. And um, we surpassed. We almost got two thousand dollars this past year overall the Ooh. team. But yeah. what's weird, and I guess also makes sense, the team does not earn things as a whole. Each Part, each member on the team earns stuff so like graham could be eligible for this or i was uh, or brett would be or Corey would be which sort of makes sense so that you can raise money and contribute to whatever teams you want to as well but anyway uh normally i wouldn't redeem it for something like this but we got a silver medal so Ooh, yeah. because we raised uh over 500 dollars, nice. is it That's showing up nice. Yeah, but, blurry, but yeah, it's a big, TMC. it's a, it's a chunky thing. Um, yeah. but the the main reason I redeemed, and so what this does, or how you get this is, if you raise over five hundred bucks, you can do for the silver medal, and then a thousand is the gold. So I was kind of bummed, like as a team, we couldn't redeem it for the gold because mm. whenever we get like a Mega Visions office, it would be cool to just have this up there, you know? Yeah, um, yeah, hundred percent. But I mainly redeemed it this year because it does say twenty twenty on there. So I thought it would be a good reminder in one of the worst years in humankind history that we have something good to remember <laughs> yeah. from it that's awesome so, um, i absolutely yeah. agree with that yeah that's a that's a cool so meta cool. actually uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. i was not i did not expect it to be this big it for the i guess what is that is like heavy? Uh, not really but it, i mean for its weight it's about um I was trying to. I don't have any coins or anything around here that I could like. It's like a gold medal. It's like an something. Olympic gold medal, you know. Yeah, it's and, and like to describe it for the audio listeners, it's kind of like a round disc with uh, image of the uh, Extra Life logo, which is like a little game controller with two wings and a little halo above it. The wings are sticking yeah. out of the actual disc of it, so kind of protruding out, which looks really cool. So redeeming yeah. points is it? Is it? Do they have like a catalog of things, or is it um, like you could? No? Um, you could also get a uh, like a T-shirt. Uh, I think the craziest thing is five thousand dollars. You get a, a a gamer chair. Um, oh wow! Yeah, there, there's a gold medal. I think there's a platinum. Um, I was having major issues with my email address, so all I did was a medal. I kind of wanted to get a shirt. It doesn't say like I raise money. It just says play games, help kids, or something like that. Um, but uh, I don't know. Maybe next year we can get the gold medal. That'd be pretty <gasps> cool. But I just, sorry, what I just happened? realized I saw it yep. on, on the medal. It says FTK, and that means for the kids, doesn't it? Yes. Okay, I, I was like reading it. I, in my brain, I was thinking, yeah, FTK. I had to. Uh, what does that mean? Yeah, for, 
Uh, yeah, for those listening, it's got the you know the generic controller with the wings coming out as their logo, and on each wing has something. One wing says 2020, the other one does say FTK. That is pretty hard to. The camera's not going to autofocus, is it? No, nah. it's too daunting. But yeah, no, it's not going to do that. That's okay. <laughs> so yeah, um, Ooh. but yeah, so that's actually someone, uh, 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 Mochi Bunny. I'm not sure what she goes by now, but she made a Perler Bead logo of the Mega Visions thing. So I'll get a better picture of this, oh, like hanging off of it sweet. or something. Um, nice. Yeah, please so. do. And then, <laughs> oh Jesus, <laughs> send it to Instagram. I hope you didn't break anything with that thing. No, it just like trimmed off the keyboard. It just trimmed off the expensive I I, keyboard. I was more concerned with the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. All right. so, that's me. Cool. So, Marcin, buddy. I can't follow How up you doing? that. Um, Sorry. <laughs> I mean, we kind of we kind of uh, talked about WandaVision, so I also finished it, and I don't want to <laughs> go into another side rant, but I, I agree with everything we said earlier about it. Um, and I'm currently uh, in the process of playing Yakuza 3, so I beat Kiwami 1 and 2, or in 0, and I'm on 3, and oh, boy, yeah. that is a brutal jump from yeah. Kiwami oh. 2 to Yakuza 3. So, yeah. I got, so I got the remastered collection on my brand spanking new PC. I mean, but it's obviously still playing a PS3 game. <laughs> I haven't yet reached the part where I'm playing like a, like a well, I guess Kiwami 2 would count, but, you know, maybe like a PS5 game. But mm -hmm. anyway... Yeah, Yakuza 3. I'm like, wait, why can't I hold down the button to make him run? He just runs by default. I completely mm -hmm. forgot about that. Um, yeah, he's in a constant state of running. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I'm enjoying it. Like, I'm in it for the story, and I'm, I'm super excited to just keep playing it and nice. going through all of them until I reach uh, Like a Dragon. Okay. I have yeah. heard the least amount of praise for 3, so you might... Oh, like nice. So I'm in, in a bit of a rut. Yeah, so three, <laughs> and then I think four is in that same kind of uh, oh, really? area. It might yeah. be. I, I just remember, the only thing I know, uh, I've unfortunately not... I haven't played a single Yakuza through, despite owning all of them. Um, I do recall for three, at one point, most of the game revolves around managing a daycare or something, and that's where oh, I really... Like <laughs> I, I, well... No, I like I, I also again. like uh, I also like management like games like I like Two Point Hospital. Uh, Sega released that with Two Point mm -hmm. Studios. I do like Two Point Hospital, and I enjoyed um, in Kwame too. You manage a club with your hostesses and uh, your. Do, do you yeah, have to do chicken? those things? Oh. No, I mean no. I mean it, you get you get stuff for it. you get experience. You get a shit ton of money if you manage your hostess thing. Okay, it's so you get so much money you you don't know what to do with it. Like you will okay. never run out ever again, which I think maybe might be you know a little too easy. But okay, yeah, I don't know. It's fun, but you know you don't have to do it. It's just a it's a very nice side mission thing. Same with the okay. uh, Yakuza construction thing where you where you hire guys with uh goro and and uh take down these mafia guys are trying to invade your construction space it's 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 like it's almost uh, played as like a real-time strategy where you're moving characters around to defend okay. uh construction uh machines basically so the rival gangs aren't like destroying yeah. it so you got to position them and level them up it's it's actually pretty so, cool so yeah i like it when they have those things as long as they're not mandatory like oh no they're not mandatory. was it grand theft auto 4 when you had to go bowling with your freaking cousin and stuff like they made <laughs> they literally made you and it's just like the bowling game's not even fun driving to it's definitely not fun and talking to your fucking cousin is even worse so. <laughs> i don't even like you you have to talk to you but no you i should, mean there's uh, a there's this one play no more heroes 2 then graham oh, i didn't yeah. even like no more heroes 1 so shock there oh well the, the second like one adds things to yeah, the, the second one adds things to be a parody on the bad parts of gta but they like made it purposely bad and oh, no. I, I look how clever they are it's not fun so i don't know <laughs> God. i'm sure there's an audience for that though if we just yeah. yep. like it. Uh, anyway um no but uh, cool. but yeah i was i was just saying that uh that the, uh there is a section that i i guess you would consider as being forced where you're hanging out with your um adopt or not adopted but you're hanging out with your essentially like a spiritual daughter for him mm -hmm. um she's from you know the the uh, foster home 
system they have in there uh, that you have to walk around the city and, you know, uh, play uh, the baseball game or whatever or eat food. But you only have to do like one or two activities like you don't have to do it all. But that that's about the extent of it but oh that, yeah that's I fine i mean like in gta they kept happening they kept like calling you to go bowling like every self doing it's always like <laughs> it wouldn't stop calling you it's like oh, that's it you, you got a ball to talk yeah. to them but i feel like with the girl she's kind of integral to the storyline like um yeah yeah so it's I mean, one of those yeah. things it kind of does keep the storyline going but kind of in a fun way rather than some cut scene but yeah, I mean, you also have to do side missions or else you'll get your ass kicked. So, I mean, to a certain degree, you have to do some of them, you know, because yeah. you need to increase your stats. You can only do so much with the main missions, you know, so. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah. But, no, that's and I got, no, I got no pickups. Okay. <laughs> oh, OK. I was going to ask, is Yakuza 3 the one where a chicken beca- can become the manager of a club or something? His name is Nugget, I think. What? I haven't seen a chicken. Uh, I guess not. No chicken. <laughs> Oh my god! If that's true, though, not in, yes. not in two. Yeah, just uh, maybe Google Yakuza Nugget the Chicken or something. Okay, and, unless uh, it was zero, uh, but I don't remember. So I'll I, look it up later. So yeah, I I need to I I've actually got the re- Yakuza Remastered collection, and I need to go back and start from the beginning because I've played one and I've fa- played and finished one and two both on the PlayStation Two back in the day, but oh, not nice. played the Kiwami games yet, um, and. Yeah, so I need to. Those are the only two Yakuza games I've actually finished, like from start to finish. So it sounds like they've got a lot of extra stuff in them over the originals because they didn't have all that stuff in it originally. <laughs> that's for sure. Hmm. Um, but yeah, so Martin, is that is that you for this week? Is that your? It is, and it's also a quick side note. It's in Yakuza Zero. I was, I, I think, like oh. if the FBI ever looks up my search history, they're gonna wonder why I looked up Chicken Nugget Yakuza. <laughs> Like, what Maybe. kind of search term is that? That's a zero. <laughs> That's definitely um, a code word for something. <laughs> are you gonna? Yeah. Are you gonna try to play like Dead Souls and the uh, the Feudal Japan one or anything else like that? If they release them, I don't think they in the West are they? So, I think the Dead Souls, Souls one is, might be. Um, I don't. I don't. I don't think so. I think. It, I mean, it's just there's just so many of them. Like I th- like there's yeah. There is so many games I have to go through as it is. Like, I don't think I'll be able to do the side ones uh, Mm -hmm. without, like, tearing my hair out. Like, God, another one. But I would would love to play the feudal ones because they just seem so different. And they're actually based on real historical people and events and stuff. So it'd be really interesting to see what they're like. But, yeah, just haven't come out of Japan, unfortunately. Um, Although I think the... The game director recently actually sort of said that in an interview that he would love to bring them over to the West. Just, uh, I guess, a case of convincing Sega to let him do that. Um, I mean, I, there's a market for it. I don't see why not. Yeah, I, I don't know. I guess because it's so heavily involved in Japanese culture or something. Maybe they can't. I, but then again, the, the main games are as well. Very so. well. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, yeah. Um, how's your How's your week, Ryan? Ah, yeah. Thanks for asking. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah uh well I'll, I'll try and rattle through this very quickly firstly i complained a few weeks ago about mario 3d worlds online just being really laggy and rubbish and uh, it's still terrible possibly even worse now i've been playing it weekly basically with kate's sister and we're playing it yesterday but well, yesterday morning my time and ooh, yeah it's uh yeah again a couple of levels we just could not we kept dying so much they kept giving us that that special cheating the pity, box the pity thing. suit the pity suit where you're basically invincible <laughs> and you can run, yeah. literally run through enemies for the whole level. They gave us that so many times, like on certain levels, because we just kept dying. And it's just because of the lag, like just jumping and stuff, which is so awkward and bad. Um, and the game froze a few times and, you know, Kate's sister kept getting cut, chucked out and stuff. And the thing is, their internet is good over there. They actually have decent internet. And my internet's pretty decent. Like playing other, like, heavy games online, completely fine. But. Yeah, anyway. Um, so yeah, Nintendo, please sort it out because it's a really good game and I want to play it properly. Um, <laughs> also, you know how my Xbox broke and then I fixed it and it broke again and then I fixed it again? It's broken again. Huzzah! Yeah. So wow. I, I think it's just that it's internal hard drive is failing or something. It just it keeps having similar issues, but it's getting worse and worse. It's getting harder to fix each time. Uh, so I was actually looking online about how to replace said hard drive and there's one video which made it look super simple and i checked another one which made it look really hard so we have to do more 
explore, exploration of that. Man, um, it's there. It, this is like if there was a, if you weren't already a Sega fan, the, the different universes are really pushing you more into that area already. Again, it's like Xbox is dead. Nintendo's online is crap. Why? <laughs> why? F- just pick a reason to hate the PS5, I guess. <laughs> But the funny thing is, actually, Kate was... So Kate, who says, I've got too many games consoles and too many games, and says, and I quote Whatever, this, Mom. they're all the same. Yeah. Um, she doesn't understand why I have different ones and stuff. She's like, but they're, Sounds they're like the Kate's racist to video games. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, she is a video game racist. Um, but she actually said to me the other day, why don't you just get the new Xbox or the PlayStation 5? I was like, if I could get one. I would. It's literally impossible to get them right now. Can't find them anywhere. I've been trying to get a PS5, yeah. and there's only ten in the whole country. So yeah, it's not. I, so... I, thought, I thought you were gonna say something like, "That's just what big corporate wants me to do." <laughs> that too. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, Microsoft could be getting more money from me from a new system very soon, but yeah, they, they're not. They're not giving it to me. But I, I know it's not Microsoft's fault. I know there's lots of things going on uh it's well, just it's just one of those funny things that she's like why don't you just get the new one when normally she'd be like why do you need another one but she's actually like why didn't you get it like it's like oh please that's i mean that kind of says something if the significant other who is not into video games can understand and and suggest buying something else rather than dealing with the problem that that shows how prevalent it is now i guess though yeah exactly and and the things yeah we use the xbox not just for my game like for me gaming in the main room we use it for like netflix and prime and all sorts of things so it's a really handy thing to have and yeah it's uh, um hmm. i would say whatever you do don't try to convince yourself that the xbox s is in sally uh, wait what is it now oh my god yeah series s is the the lesser of the two yeah. right yeah series yeah. x whatever you do it's don't confusing. convince yourself that it's good to go with the s when you are going to eventually upgrade to the x anyway and nothing's going to be compatible with the x in like two years so just you know, I'm yeah. sure you were already thinking like that, Graham, but forward thinking, don't do right. the downgraded version. Yeah, no, I don't want to. Um, yeah, I'll go for the yeah. S. No, so the X. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're going to find the X. The Extreme. Extreme. Xbox Extreme. Extreme, Extreme. Extreme graphics. So, yeah. Um, also, fun thing, I've been crazy busy with work because this time last year, my team consisted of five people, um, including my line manager, and now it has two people. So, huzzah. Because uh, my Wait, boss... how many people are in the company? Uh, like 250 or something in total. No, I thought you were going to say like 10. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> oh, God, no. no and this is not because people have been fired or let go because of COVID or anything. Uh, one guy did quit because um, his job wasn't so secure because he actually was through an agency. But he was like a permanent agency worker. But mm-hmm. we having to cut down on agencies because of COVID. We had to like cut back on certain things. So he was like, I may as well just leave and basically left. And they replaced him with a temporary agency person for only a few months. Um, and that person's now gone. Um, my boss got a promotion. And then one of the other guys has just gone on paternity leave. And yeah, and like I was talking to one of the other uh, people in the company who she works with me, but she's not on the same team. And she was just like, um, yeah, this is literally the worst management I've ever seen. Because they knew someone left like a year ago nearly. So yeah, they knew that they need to replace that person. The guy who's just gone paternity leave, they've known for like, you know, nine months, basically, that he's going to, his partner's going to have a baby. And they also knew yeah. about my boss's promotion months ago as well, like six months ago, he's up for it. So it's just like, why haven't they brought anyone on? Uh, so yeah, it's just very, right. very heavy workload at the moment. Um, they're planning to bring people, obviously the guy from paternity leave is coming back in a few months, but um, he gets like three months of paternity leave, basically, and... But yeah, we need to replace other people still. It's just like, whoa, heavy. So yeah, that's that's partly why the last week's show went out kind of late because I was really busy uh, just with work stuff. But yeah, yeah I don't blame you. That that sucks. I mean, I don't understand why. Like you knew they know this ahead of time, right? Like, hmm. why would you not plan for that? Yeah, it's not like the guy no. who quit did it last week or something. He did it nearly a year ago now, <laughs> basically. Um, like maybe maybe ten months hmm. ago. And yeah, the guy on paternity leave told everyone many months ago that his wife was pregnant and he's going to have paternity leave. But yeah, it's just nuts. That's, but that's poor management. Yeah, Although, uh, oh. I, kind of the opposite thing happened at my job during the pandemic, where I started this new position and then other stuff was getting thrown at me. And then someone who actually applied for it at the same time I did 
was suddenly part of our team. And I was like, oh, congratulations. Like no one's <laughs> keeping me informed about wow. who is getting added and whatever. And then like suddenly I wasn't covering as many clients as I was. And I'm like, this is a good thing, but I just kind of wish I knew what was going on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. I, I, there was a period in, in my organization where it's like that. So it's, it's a universal thing, you know, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, sadly. But, um, oh, well, yeah. I mean, work in general is fine. It's just busy at the moment. So can't really complain. We all have uh, jobs. That's yeah, something. Thank God. Yeah. So yeah. Can't really complain about that. But yeah. So it works good. Just very, very, very busy and overloaded, but yeah. And unfortunately I don't have any pickups this week, but hopefully next episode, I will have several for you. I'll just, leave you with that Ooh. that thought for a moment um, so you're hitting up pixel heart right with all their reselling of he's getting the custom Dream game Cast gear game. he's getting the <laughs> yeah. new Dreamcast games he's getting everything that we i have shared actually, out i have to be i stay clear of the pixel heart thing because i thought yeah I, that's gonna be a lot of money but i i, I won't say what happened I, i'll explain it what happens the next week um okay, no. so yeah i guess that does it for our week this week and do you guys want to take a quick break, or should we go straight into Scotty Mo? Go straight into me. What do you guys want? <laughs> Let's go straight into you and then out of you to a bathroom break. How about that? Fantastic. That makes okay. sense. Okay, awesome. So it's time for Scotty Moe's Mail Sack of Wonder. Here it is where you ask us stuff and we answer it. Hooray! Yes, that's right. It's time for Scotty Mo. So do your thing, buddy. All right, and then it's time for the mail sack. Oh, let me mail sack. Something like that. Um, so this is the mail sack where people submit questions to us through Discord and Twitter. Uh, people in the chat right now, if you want, you can throw us questions right now. We'll try to get to them. Um, we mentioned that the main topic is going to be uh, Sega games that um, would transfer or what Sega games or franchises would you want thrown into a board game or a tabletop type thing. Uh, and so we did get uh, Frank Gabriel on the Twitter at user pending said super monkey ball, but in the style of mousetrap. Ooh. Um, Ooh. So is that a universal game? You know what mousetrap is, Graham? Oh, hell yeah. Right Mousetrap's one of my all time favorite games. Oh, okay. I actually got one Sorry. Of the original versions. <laughs> Part of the citizenship. <laughs> what? <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> uh i i've never i've never actually played mousetrap like i've never legitimately played it through you just I, as a child you just want to turn the crank and watch the things oh, the, so the rubric the rube what what's it rube goldberg machine thing happen i didn't Stop. add a name for the machine but yeah oh. get the thing to go and the things to happen and the thing go, the case come down trap that mouse yeah exactly <laughs> yeah i never uh, played it personally either but what what it looked fun. Maybe I should be asking you. Have you guys seen Mousetrap? Do you know what Mousetrap is? <laughs> well, elaborate, elaborate. Then what? Is, yeah. What is Mousetrap for? For us uninformed oh, okay. plebs. So that was a '90s board game. Maybe it came out before that, but um, where you had these little mice and you you played as the mice and you wanted to get through this board that had everything from like um, a crank to I think there'd be like a, a boot that kicks a catapult and like a marble goes down a spirally thing and then falls into something to be the weight of a cage eventually coming down and trapping a mouse. I, there's other stuff in between that I can't remember. Um, but we never, like I knew people that had it, but we never legitimately played it. We just would set things up and watch stuff fall basically. Um, and uh, there was one similar to that, that I did own. And I think I sort of tried to play called grape escape as in the fruit, the grape. Okay. And you make these little guys out of Play-Doh with like arms and hands, like almost the California raisins. And but that was more fun because you put them in something and it like crushes them or like chops <laughs> off a hand or something like that because they're just made of play doh. I don't know. It was I the never 90s. played Everybody either of these games. Be more violent. <laughs> I played Monopoly then. and sorry. I don't know. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Um, see, what's funny though is they suggested Super Monkey Ball in the style of Mousetrap. Super Monkey Ball is basically already a board game that exists. That labyrinth game where you had like a a. a, a, oh, yeah. a a maze and you try to tilt the marble or yeah, tilt yeah. the maze so that the marble would go through and get into a hole eventually yeah well, i was gonna say so like is there an idea like are we trapping the monkey like he's already in a ball right like so if he's, right. if they're trying to make it a mouse trap game how would that work i don't know right is, is that how the, is that how the mouse trap game goes you trap it <laughs> yeah I i'm not sure i don't think how this ball. would work as a mouse trap <clears throat> and yeah, I don't know. Uh, oh, there, there, there was, uh, 
unless okay so there's another board game which maybe could work even better for this i can't i can't actually remember the name of the board game so the board was like a big plastic thing and they had lots of little how can i exp- i don't know how i can explain this without having showing a picture but basically there were little sections to the board and you can manipulate them by twisting different dials and there'd be like one bit where these like like two metal prod things and the ball sits on them you have to like open them up slightly and the ball will then roll forward mm. and backwards but you have to do it in certain timing and then there'll be like one section where it's on like this little plastic thing you have to hit this button and it'll the plastic thing will hit it up and it'll like go up in the air and if it falls off the board and rolls down the side then then you've lost and you have to like go back to the start and it's like yeah i don't know of, what you're talking about <laughs> uh, i'm gonna have to, um, I I, I have to google this i was button. trying to figure it out yeah i don't, I, I, I don't, I don't know, know. I, like you had a fever dream. Uh, no, it's really good. I it's think such... you just came up with a board uh, game idea. Oh, yeah. man. I don't, I don't even there know what is, to Google um, for this. <laughs> I was trying to find... I recently bought a Sega Saturn game that is essentially Labyrinth, but it is difficult. I thought about streaming it once, but I could not get past the second level, and I just... I, I thought better of myself. Like, I, no one wants to want watch me get aggravated with this seemingly simple game, but it is not at all. Um, I can't remember what it's called. Actually... Let me, I'll grab it. Um, I'll read you guys the next one here. We went on to Discord. Uh, Baron Von Powell said Sonic Shuffle, the board game. And he spelled <laughs> board wrong. He spelled yes, board he like, I'm bored. I have nothing to do. Oh, so Chris. I don't know if that was deliberate or our managing editor doesn't that, know how to spell. Hey, yo. I, yeah, I assume sure. that's, a, that's kind of some kind of joke because it would be a. You know, so board so, game. So Chris said Sonic Shuffle, the board game, and then TJ also said Sonic Shuffle, and then he exploded. So, yes, which is correct. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I, that was okay. That was my suggestion in the next in our main topic, or at least one of them. So I won't, I won't give my opinion on it too much, mm-hmm. but I think it can work, and it can be better than the Dreamcast game, and I still like the Dreamcast game, so. Fight me, anyone who wants to. Yeah, the um, we did play Sonic Shuffle and streamed it recently for part of that extra life merit or extra life earnings time. I don't know what they call it. Um, if people want to watch that, let me see if I can if I can find the link quick enough. I will do that, but and throw it in the chat. Um, I did find before we go too far from it. Uh, the Saturn game I mentioned. It's called Tama Adventures. Wait, Adventurous Ball in Giddy Labyrinth. Um, and you can see the cover oh is just two odd looking hands holding the world. And oh, yes. if we go to the back, it's even horrifically more human like really? real hands. Oh no, that's uh, 3d. Um, and, uh, but it is very much like a labyrinth type game. It is hard though. Um, someone recommended it to me and it was only released in Japan. Um, does but, it look like uh, that in the game with human hands? No. It doesn't. You don't see hands ever. Uh, let me see <laughs> if I can find any, like... Um, I mean, yeah, it looks kind of like that. You just see a little ball scooting around the different areas and things like that. that. Cool. So you're just... So it's like super It's fun. Ball. It's a difficult game. So um, can, you show, a little can you hold up the... What's it called again? Uh, it is called Tama Adventurous Ball in Giddy Labyrinth. Because oh, okay, So there. that's kind of like the board game thing I was trying to explain to you guys. Oh, I mean, that's Labyrinth. Um, but yeah, this one has like, you know, little pegs go up and down. You have to scoot over them. And, yes, um, that's literally the, so the physical thing. thinking of Labyrinth. Is it's that probably cool? called Labyrinth. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you're looking for one on the Wii, Koro Rimpa Marble Mania is really good. Um, and that's co-op as well. Uh, but that was one where you held the Wiimote sideways and would uh, you would just move the level. You wouldn't move the marble rolling around and stuff. Um and uh yeah sonic shuffle the marathon including that the mini games get crazy and the game is incredibly over ambitious in my opinion um with some of the plot devices i don't know how it yep there's tj in the chat now he said sonic shuffle run um it, it's just it the game gets too detailed than it should for a children's board game type thing I wish that there was one more entry because during this marathon, I actually started to enjoy it because the, the mini games and the different items that you use and the abilities, they, they have a good idea overall, but there's just too much going on in one standalone session. Yeah. And, and, and the thing is like the board evolves as with the longer you play, but 
you don't want to play that game long. And if it's you versus the AI, the AI cheats so horribly that it's not even fun. So you have I to think the thing is, with three people. The thing is, uh, you know, I have a twin brother, so like I always had someone, you know, to play against. So yeah. I guess maybe in that sense, that's why I enjoyed it more. Because I will say when I played it, you know, by myself with AIs or computers, not as fun. Um, right. So, yeah. Well, that's, and they yeah also I cheat. tried to, uh, I found out how to unlock, like, other characters and other things in the game so the way that we were playing it online for the marathon i wasn't gonna i didn't think i was gonna be able to find a vmu save file so i was like all right you know what week before i'll just sit down with this and try to play through the game to unlock stuff because you like collect rings and as currency and i was going through and i'm like oh my god these cost way too much and i did not even win this first round and i don't even know how i cannot try to play this campaign by myself and unlock this thing so i found a vmu save file and just freaking downloaded that with all the characters in it i said this before the show but i think they should remake sonic shuffle or make a new one and then just just make it better you know for the switch just keep it simple just make it for the switch a nice you know multiplayer game they could redeem themselves wash the bad taste out of everyone's mouth of sonic shuffle i Uh, think has it been 20 it's been 20 years right it's been 20 i I would like to see a remake of sonic shuffle as well because i do believe at its heart it could be a really fun game i mean like mario party is an example and but yeah i just there were so many things wrong with it but <laughs> i just yeah. i just played the second mario party over the weekend with uh cory anti chris and eddie fuerte on on cory stream and i i have fun playing games with those guys but i legitimately think that mario party sucks i was oh, so okay. not interested in what was going on like not paying attention because it just it was not engaging to me maybe it's the characters that i don't care about mm, all I don't of know. them like the whole series I mean, I've only played one and two, and like a little oh. bit of whichever one used the microphone on GameCube. Um, oh, okay. But I think what I was going to say about re releasing Sonic Shuffle, I think if the Wii somehow had lasted a couple years more, that there would have been one, uh, a Sonic Shuffle remake on the Wii, mm. if anything, first. And then now with Switch, they could totally do if It, it would be like it's Switch exclusive or something non yeah. yeah. Use probably. the motion controls and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. You can take advantage yeah, of all totally. that stuff. So. Um, probably just, somehow yeah i've actually just put it in the, our discord chat and also on our stream chat here but the game i was thinking of with the little ball and stuff is called screwball scramble in the uk oh i think it's also called run yourself ragged in other countries i've seen this so yeah i put a picture up in discord uh so that's yeah. not labyrinth <laughs> it's it great it is not labyrinth you have there's a bunch of anthropomorphic balls running around yeah, and, and and <laughs> shoes. yeah. yeah. But it's like it's like yeah, on a getting. field, or is it like a swamp area? I don't know. There's it's, a yeah, it's kind of bridge that a... goes up and down, and like this area with stumps after this like fl- little tunnel that it goes through, and it falls into something else. And Skateboard there's an alligator, park, an alligator pond. Yeah, yes, and, and if you see those little buttons at the bottom, you, those are the things you press or move for the, each individual section and stuff. If oh, you press them too hard or you yeah. move them incorrectly, the ball will fall fall into like the swamp area, and then it's like. Oh, pass it to your mates to give it. There we go. But it's a great, it's really fun. Like, hours of fun at my friend's house with that. Hours. And the same guy who owned Mousetrap. So, yeah. They still, uh, re, uh, do they still uh, sell it or did it, like, run out of... Uh... I think you can still buy it. I think one of my friends has actually got it, like, quite recently. Um, unless he's no got batteries it required. Uh, oh, you don't yeah. really need the batteries. That's just for, there's a... What's it called? Like, there's like a timer at the back which needs batteries, and like, you, I think you technically get like sixty seconds to do it, but you know oh. you don't have to follow that rule um, yeah, because everything else is just manual. Is. Just yeah. Okay. Yeah, check it out, chat. Check it out. It's a great board game. Try it. Anyway, <laughs> the more you know. Um, and uh, what was I? Uh, let's see what else we got here. Oh, Zelly.com in Discord said, "I think a Shenmue board game would pre be pretty sick." Mm. um we will get into that later as well yeah we will um nicholas schaefer in discord said i think a jet set board game that's a turf war game to control most of the board would be cool um (laughs) that's also something we might be getting into later as well (laughs) maybe um and then uh, they also said uh, yeah 
They also said, also, yes, we need a Sonic Shuffle game with an instant load time and a skip button for PC players. So oh. if you, what we did one year for the, the Dreamcast Marathon before I was on Mega Visions, we found a ISO of Sonic Shuffle that reduced the load times. Oh. That made it a little more bearable, but it doesn't make the game more fun. It, you're just not waiting as long. <laughs> right. uh, Whatever helps. Um, you, you just get to the pain quicker, that's all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It doesn't really, yeah. Um, it's it's like Sonic 06. Like, that game it wouldn't be better with shorter load times. It's still Sonic 06. Yeah. I controversially don't mind Sonic 06. What You're a shock. It- <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I played through that whole game, and I was like, I actually had fun, and it's better than some other Sonic games. Like, the Black Knight, Whoa. which is one of the worst games ever. It's, oh no! It's Sonic. O's, I I'm gonna hold it out there. Sonic 06 is not the worst Sonic game by a long shot. Everyone just thinks I didn't. Those. I didn't play the series of Sonic games on the Wii. Oh, they are not. They 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 are not good. Colors <laughs> seven or rings. Oh, Colors is very good. Colors is brilliant. Black Knight Night. and what was it called? Sonic, Sonic and the Secret, Secret Rings. Rings. Secret that Rings one is bad. Oh, but Black Knight's that, worse that, than Secret Rings. Long shot. <laughs> I didn't play Black Knight. Secret Rings was the first Wii game that I like almost chucked a Wiimote across the screen, <laughs> a room and not because it was part of the game like oh we, you know. to, we could we could we could have a whole episode about bad sonic games though. that's uh, not i think we should yeah okay <sighs> that's moving on um, low. yeah 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 uh and then uh nicholas schaefer also says so microsoft's demonstration of the hololens 2 with pokemon go made me want to go buy one until i saw they were three thousand five hundred dollars what Sega game do you think would translate well into augmented reality? Mm. Um, so we did uh, watch. Graham, did you get a chance to watch that incredibly awkward demo? Yes. Yeah. The hilarious. CEO of is it Niantic who made Pokemon Go, and they did something like that with um, mm-hmm. uh, something before that with like capturing cities or I, I forget what it was. But um, Pokemon Go, if you don't know what that is, I'm not going to tell you. Where have you been? <laughs> uh, but it this is. thing, the Hololens, is their VR, but with AR, it you would so you would walk around your house and see with these giant goggles mm. on. You would think you'd see the Pokemans in real life, and I guess you hold up your wrist or something to yeah. like this. pick mm-hmm. an item or whatever. I didn't really understand that part, um, but uh, but yeah, but that that's that's what that is. Um, the trailer or whatever it is, it's like a minute and a half long. Uh, and normally I don't say watch or read YouTube comments, but one of them said, watch this in half speed. And it is the funniest thing you'll ever see. Oh, and I stand man. by that. that it was my morning. I was laughing. My <laughs> hey, it, Pikachu, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, like, Veronica. <laughs> there, I wish yeah. they just presented it like that. But um, yeah, I mean, in terms of Sega, uh, games, I think maybe a House of the Dead kind of Ooh. thing, but I feel like that would be weird in public if you're like holding like a I don't know what you'd be holding to shoot them, but Just like finger, I'm, I'm assuming your hand, your finger guns, yeah, right, yeah. I mean, is but it, I think is, that'd be cool. that's, that can't be much weirder than people walking around with their phones going ah Pikachu like trying to run across a highway. <laughs> but I also think I like, see like, one, I see one. <laughs> But you're also like hearing this like goggle thing around your head, and then you're just like pointing at people <laughs> like unknowingly. And people are like, "What the fuck is this guy doing?" <laughs> so if- yeah, it's like it'd be like some dude walking around with ski goggles on in the middle of June or something, just <laughs> yeah. like throwing his arms yeah, around, going like this, <laughs> like uh, in the park. Yeah. Like people would be running away or calling the cops. Uh, how much fun would that be? I, um, I link- <laughs> if you bought like a big abandoned mansion or. Oh, look. I don't know, a warehouse or something, you could set it up with like these VR lenses and be like, House of the Dead, VR, and then like, you're just walking yeah. around like... Well, that actually was happening when VR was starting to pick back up. Um, there was a company that was renting out warehouses and they had this like backpack battery-powered VR setup. Oh, wow. And so they would set things up in the warehouse that you would go through and experience as essentially that's... like laser tag zombie killing stuff. That's pretty cool. Um yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I, I dropped the in the chat for those that haven't seen. I dropped the Niantic Pokemon Go thing, um, and I think actually to back up to exactly what Nicholas Schaefer said with Jet Set, Jet Set could work, but that could also be the most dangerous game <laughs> in the world. Yeah. Tag <laughs> running things. into traffic and yeah. yeah. I was thinking Jet Set as well, but then I was like, how can you ex- 
replicate the experience of going really fast on skates unless you've got skates on. Uh, but and doing grind and stuff Sonic. that could be really dodgy. <laughs> But, yeah. Is Hatsune Miku yeah. a Sega property, or are they just yeah, partnering yes. with them? And publishing? I think. I mean, that can work. I guess as in terms of like just sitting there and watching a concert from yeah. Hatsune Miku. I think that'd be cool. That's uh, exactly what they have already. They have those games. Oh, that well. Hatsune okay. Miku VR is you just like sitting there with your neon glow stick rods and just doing this <laughs> to the beat. Uh, it's um uh, and son, there, there's a great. Doing, <laughs> yeah, there's a great um, Giant Bomb did that, and it's hilarious because they like they're focusing on the concert and Hatsune Miku. But if you look to the left or the right, it's just these shadow mannequin people, like with no features at all. So they Very. like look, and then they like try to turn around and try to just leave the crowd gradually. It's pretty hilarious, yeah. but um, uh, that could be something. Yeah. Uh, what one game on the I've chat? Would you say, Graham? I was going to say one game I was thinking of, which uh, equally I don't know if this could be doable because it might just be dangerous or stupid. It would be like Streets of Rage or something, or Virtual Fighter, like a fighting game. But you yeah, just, you'll you'll just see this dude in the street like walking along going... <laughs> but I think <laughs> the, 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 the fine part is, is that you can see, like it's not like you're wearing v, v, a VR headset like the PSVR and you can't True. see your environment. So, I mean, it's safer right. in that sense yeah you know so you, you'll just look like you'll just look like you're practicing karate or yeah. you know something <laughs> or look completely goofy but at least you can see your environment but yeah, yeah you wouldn't cool. have headphones on or anything to hear you learn later on that you just beat up some poor old lady walking her dog or whatever <laughs> uh <laughs> um, yeah uh but tj in the chat suggested knights in vr which would make people nauseous very much Ooh, so yeah. um then he said burning rangers in vr would be cool until you try to yeah. go into a burning building or something, but um, that'd be a the, great. Uh, that'd be a brilliant one, actually. Burning Rangers, yes. Oh, make it happen. <laughs> um, Never do it. Don't do it. I forget. Uh, I forget what we were talking about. That Marson brought up Google Glass for some reason. Uh, this was before we started recording. Um, oh yeah. I did have an experience with Google Glass in real life, though. Oh, wow. When I was working at GameStop some dad and his wife and two kids came in and mm -hmm. they i don't did google glass ever get actually released to the public like commercially i don't even remember i thought it did um, but it was really expensive and it was like really hard to get hold of like it's almost like a beta test for the consumers but you could just yeah. pre-order or buy them or something it might have been um but i i will never forget this moment because they walked in and um, the dad clearly was like sort of a gamer, but he he had on these glasses and I couldn't tell they were Google Glass until he's like, uh, oh, let me see that game. And he um, grabbed it and he's like, let me see what this is about and like stares at it. And one of the kids is like, dad, what are you doing? He's like, if I if I scan this, it'll show me what the game's about and give me a better description. See, he was seriously oh, just no. like blankly staring wow. at the back of this box for a couple of minutes and i'm just like this is pitch perfect i work in freaking retail and barely i'm living paycheck to paycheck you can afford or you work for google and you have these dumb glasses and you look like a goddamn idiot right now yeah like this, this is what i was talking about before chat is i don't think there's been a company that has developed a a vr headset or ar or whatever that looks for one fashionable you don't look ridiculous or you know the user interface and the way you go about controlling this thing doesn't make you look ridiculous either you know yeah, so he's just like I, staring yeah just, it was exactly in, in and that the guy, time, the i could guy, like bring guy, you up a trailer and i brought stuff. those glasses in just so we can show you that he has the google glass yeah he can scan i'm like you look like you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry yeah i have it a feeling was what what's there like controversy around it because people like like with like um privacy and stuff because people could like almost google other people like when they meet them or something weird like that so right. a lot of people uh, wouldn't let them go like places banned them i think in california or something yeah but you also gotta also gotta you know switch the tab by going like this too like if you're trying to <laughs> do something else people are like what the hell is this guy doing so you're trying to talk to somebody and close a window and you poke them in the eye or something <laughs> yeah yeah that's the other thing i'm like hey, 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 this is not intuitive oh man um yeah, uh, Happy Dude says in the chat, Google Cardboard is a thing. Yeah, that is the yeah, thing. Where you thing. Essentially, strap your phone oh, two inches from your eyes. I've, I've, do you have one, Graham? It's not a Google one, but it's uh, it's like phone. one I got for like 
one second. I need to somehow stretch my wire to grab this thing. Well, I have to take my headphones off one second. Okay. No, I got a I got a Samsung one. I think Samsung created one that was. I got I I got this. It was like a charity event thing that was being that the UK does every year. It's called Children in Need, but it's like this is basically a Google cardboard. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like a box of animal crackers. Yeah, you kind of put your, you put your <laughs> phone in this flappy bit at the back, and then you put it on, and then you like strap it to your face like this, and <laughs> you can play VR games basically. Um, it, I mean, it's like, not like it's they have like glass in there or something like magnifying stuff, right? Yeah, like, it doesn't a, just. I don't know if you can see. Well, I thought they just a, give you like yeah. a cardboard cut on. Like if I just want to no. put my phone to my face, I could just do that without a cardboard. Yeah, no, there, there is actually like <laughs> yeah. a. a it's like a solid plastic this like a convex or concave or whatever but yeah but i think they were some fun vr games you can get on your phone but they're really super super basic like they're not they're not like you know the oculus rift or anything but, um but they're fun for like five minutes and you're like well yeah never play that again sort of thing <laughs> yeah it's the same as like the when the 3ds first debuted and they had those ar games where you could put your face on these little characters on helicopters flying around and you shot them it's like that was cool for five minutes oh yeah yeah um yeah uh Mm -hmm. and then uh to get away from that but other games turn into board games maybe uh lbd night train says total war Hmm. question mark i don't know how that would work that could Uh, be a bit like risk it could be like like, it could be i mean total war is uh the la 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 la. they they did it with uh warhammer i think that's a tabletop game of course you can still like warhammer total war dungeons and dragons you know that style get yourself you know a board some painted figurines Mm. you know that'd that'd be fun why not your minifigs yep um and then uh, Chromeca says in the Discord, a choo-choo rocket board game could work. I'm not yeah. sure. Well, if there's anything that would be mousetrap. Yeah, I was literally about to say, mice. there's the mousetrap. Yeah. <laughs> but that could be yeah. interesting. That, 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 there might be, you could do, you could somehow do that with like little cards of arrows and stuff. You have to lay them out, down in certain places or something. Oh, yeah. Then roll the dice and then the cat comes out. So I don't know. But I think there would right. be ways to do this. Yeah, so you just cool. sent you'd almost be creating the board with the cards too. Yeah, extent. I imagine you just have like a big sort of checkered board, um, mm-hmm. which is basically blank, and then maybe, maybe you randomly put down little where the rockets go or something. I don't, I don't know. Like we should have, we maybe we should have asked with this question: How would these games work? Because people yeah. are just <laughs> stating the titles, and we're coming up with the ideas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is how cool. Sega makes games. Yes. No. Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're listening. Yeah, in. Yeah, the game dev is easy. Idea. Yeah. Um, and the happy dude left one uh, a couple minutes ago in the Discord. Everyone craps on the Pokemon Master Trainer board game in the 90s. I but any thoughts that. about a redo? Not counting the Monopoly version that Hasbro put out years ago, but I'm talking about a mechanically different game that's akin to the series of the okay. games and or anime. I don't, I'm don't. i not actually familiar with that one. I have no idea about that game at all. Um, I I've, I mean I have I've completely forgot like this has re-entered my memory like I completely forgot that, that I played that as a kid but I mean okay. I thought it was fun but like I I haven't played it in my thirty year old brain you know it's different from a nine year old how, how what can you remember what you do in the game like how does it work no, no okay. I don't <laughs> I just remember I remember, I remember the, the cover of this. Oh, but I don't crap. remember how it I remember but, the cover of it and I looked up an image. Now I want to play it though. Fuck. Again. I I just have to quickly Google this. Yeah, I put in. Oh, that's a giant link. I'm sorry, Twitch chat. But that's what the board looks like. I remember the box because the box is all black and it just says Pokemon and has a bunch of pictures of the Pokemon on it. Um, I've not played this. I didn't touch it. The only thing I got into outside of the the actual Pokemon video games was the card game that I got into, but not really this though. I didn't know how to play the Pokemon card games younger, but I did like collecting them. But I recently started playing uh, again, and I do enjoy it. I just suck at it, but I know it's how to play now. It's pretty straightforward. It's like it's a more streamlined Magic the Gathering. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. 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 Huh. Um. That's that's about all we got, though. Uh, let me double check the Discord, see if anything else popped up before we started. Nope. Nothing cool. there, really. Um, so with that in mind, that's, unless, did you guys have anything else to say about the Pokemon mans or anything? Mm -mm. Nope. Just that I have to play it again. That's going to do it for the mail sack. 
Lovely. Brilliant. Okay, so with that, I think we'll take a quick sort of uh, four or five minute break, uh, but we'll be right back with our feature discussion, which is more about what games would, what Sega games would make a brilliant board game. So if you've got any ideas in the chat, drop them in. Um, but we've got some ideas of our own, so stick around and let's see if we, yeah, let's see if we can make something. Awesome. Yes, welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. And we are on to our feature discussion, which this week we're looking at board games, or specifically, if Sega were to make a board game based on one of its games, what would it be? How would it play as well? I think we've just discovered that's an important thing to say. Um, so we kind of this all came out of a few a couple of weeks ago, Stardew Valley board game um, sort of was revealed, I guess. Um, there's news about the Starboard, Stardew Valley board game. And it sort of got us thinking, if Sega made a board game, what, 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 what game would work best? There's been quite a lot of... Um, board games out there you've had pac-man they've had resident evil board games there's been the doom board game portals even have a board game so there's a lot oh, of board yeah. video game board games out there and i mean sega's got a whole array of different styles of video games and stuff but surely at least one of them could be a tabletop board game so how do we want to do this guys should we just uh, talk about the ones our ideas and stuff or what do you want to do? Well, let's talk about some of the video game board games that exist okay. already first. Cool. Um, so the Pac-Man one, it came out when Pac-Man was like new still. Like it's definitely straight up, straight out of the 70s. Um, and and I had it, I think we got it at a garage sale eons ago. But the way that it works is the whole board, you play as one of four Pac-Man. And <laughs> I wish that I had it here physically. I could show you how nightmarish the Pac-Man looks. Because it's like... It, 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 it basically you take a hockey puck turn it sideways and somehow make it chomp that's what the pac-man things were that you were controlling oh, okay um, it's about that big and but the board itself you set up marbles on every single grid on the board and then you go through and like the pac-man had this hole on the bottom of it so that you could like on the board you'd like push it down and he chomps it and eats the marble as right. you go uh and there are also ghosts that can catch you and you can turn the ghost blue um by eating the power pellets and stuff but I mean, you want to talk about a hassle that kids do not want to do to just set up a board game, setting down like 120 pellets on a thing, and then mm. somebody hits the table and they just all fly onto the <laughs> no, floor God. or something. <laughs> okay. um, which, it's like, why would you think, why would you want a Pac-Man board game? But if you think back to the 70s, there was no home console that was an arcade, like one-to-one -one mm. perfect transa transition of a, of a arcade game. So, of course, they got to find some way to bring Pac-Man to the home to uh make more money than what the arcades are doing so that's at least the logic i probably think was behind it um how do you win then, though you just like hungry hungry hippos like whoever gets yeah, the most you just yeah. get the most pellets and that's pretty much it so it's not a long game either so maybe that's how it does work well for kids um there are uh, i did look up the stardew valley like a tutorial of it and i could not watch this entire 12 12 minute video of how to play this game there's so much pregame setup, and like oh, one okay. phase is just absurd, like one turn. Um, but I also don't really care for Stardew Valley anyway. It is literally chores the game, so <laughs> I'm not really. <laughs> it's just a deck of cards that says clean your room. Ah, oh, god damn it! Yeah. Well, <laughs> when, when it when it came out on the Switch, and I was living, uh, I had a roommate before uh, before my living situation. Now, um, I. You know, in the in the living room, I would walk through and my roommate would be playing Stardew Valley and I would watch him play this for a little bit and kind of just get into a trance. But I legitimately asked him, like, I, I was like, so the aesthetic is fun and I, I like it has a very upbeat atmosphere. But but I, I just point blank asked him, like, how is this game fun to you? Because it seems like you're just doing chores and tending to your barn and stuff. He's like, yeah, you are. But I enjoy that. <laughs> But like Harvest so, Moon, right? Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's, that's just like Harvest Moon. Yeah, I, I yeah. like that too. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's like one of those Not games me. where you just kind of like chill, sit back, and just kind of, you know, if you had a rough day, you're just, you know, <laughs> yeah. going back and doing some more work. And uh, but is, in a nice cartoony environment, you know, I don't know. I think it's it's kind of... And isn't kinda that like Animal Crossing as well? Because here's the thing, I've never actually played an Animal Crossing game, but uh, yeah. what I've seen... 
I mean, yeah, Animal Crossing means you build, you, you, uh, you go around, you have animals in your town, you can chop trees, catch bugs, fish, fossils. Uh, I mean, it's it's real world um, time, so it like each hour is a legitimate hour. Oh, wow, okay. And there's different right. things that happen at certain times of the day. Um, uh, and you know, they, they, Animal Crossing is a lot more archaic though with its process. Yes. Yeah, I mean, but I also Especially enjoy that too. Things. But I mean, I, I, I definitely can't play it, you know, uh, like all year because I feel like, you know, I get tired of it just because, you know, it, it, it could get repetitive. Sometimes you just go back right. in and check in and, and see how everyone else is doing, but it's like a 30-minute yep. thing. Um, The Portal board game I've also played, it's not good. It, it does not capture Portal at all. Yeah. Like, I... you have... Oh, have you played it, Graham? No, I was just I've just seen okay. screenshots of it. I've seen I think I've seen a video of it as well. I was just watching it going. Yeah, I, I you don't have get it. like I don't get it. <laughs> kind of you have tiles that you move. So I, I think there's no more than maybe like three things set up at a time. But as you progress, you take that tile, you flip it over, and like you put it and so it's almost like a side scrolling idea in that in that atmosphere. But it it doesn't like I really Portal Two is one of my favorite games of all time, like mm. hands down, because I like puzzle games and it's a rare game that pulls off humor well. I feel yeah. Um, but the board game is just there's no like character to it really. There's no Glados type thing or anything like that. It's yeah. very aw- it, it feels stale compared to a game that does have an environment. You know, you could see yourself being part of. But um, the Doom game I have also tried. And I actually purchased a game similar to that. So it's called Fred. And I brought it up here. Wow. It's by Steve Jackson Games, who do do the Munchkin games. Oh, okay. Um, But yeah, so let me, I'm going to, I brought this up here because I wanted to show you guys the game board. Um, So it's very much like Dungeons and Dragons in the terms, in the feel of there is a dungeon master who is essentially Cyber Demon. And, but okay. This, I'm going to have to stand back, actually. This is the the board for it. Um, it's going to fold out oh, wow. into... Okay. So it's, for the audio, this is Scotty's folding out a big, giant board. Which is... Yeah, so you can see it's like okay. six panels, like three by two. And yeah. you also can turn it over. And it, oh, shit. It kind of and looks it's... a little bit like the map view on the original Quake, in a way. To be a little bit of. yeah if you were like making a level or making a multiplayer level yeah but so the way that it works and frag is essentially doom but the way that it works is one person is the cyber demon and they have you know kind of the manual that they can follow and they see where enemies are going to show up and stuff when you maybe walk up to a machine gun and you grab that and then suddenly there's demons everywhere and stuff like that mm-hmm. but as the cyber demon your goal is to kill the other the doom slayers and it is so difficult to actually win in that game despite the fact that it's three versus one um and you have to set up almost tiles on did you guys ever play the home alone board game there was a home alone board game what is it like Uh, mousetrap no not at all that would have been fun um (laughs) the home alone board game you set up tiles you set up individual um like small coin sized tiles on the entire board and it's either a trap or money or something else that's how this doom board game works as well so you get ammo you get health you get different weapons and then different things like you go into a hallway it expands the board and you get more enemies too much too much setup for a non-stop first person shooter game <laughs> God. um yeah that painful frag and doom are painful um but we did look at this 10 best multiplayer or 10 best board games games turned into board games the Resident Evil 2 board game just happened on Kickstarter. I have that, and it's essentially like the size of this frag. There's like five boxes this big for the Resident Evil 2 game. Oh, it's really? absurd. Yeah. Um, I thought about also getting them and just showing you guys the stack, but I don't need to do that right now. Um, so there, there's board games out there based on games that do work. There's some that just don't. It just doesn't make sense that you would even try to do this. Uh, Steamforge Games is the one who made the Resident Evil one. There is also a either a Dark Souls or a Demon Souls board game. Yeah, um, Dark Souls, I think. Yeah, so there's... Have you guys, before we get into our ideas, have you guys played any other board games based on video games? Um, I, I do own a board game based on a video game. Sort of. Oh? 
it's 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 not okay the board game is not specifically a board game about that game but it's a board it's a classic board game with a theme of a game and i've never actually played it but here we go oh my goodness monopoly sonic boom there is that st- great it's, uh, rapping or is that it's still in its rapping i just haven't bothered to open it partly because i don't really <laughs> like monopoly that much and i've Why'd never actually played it? sonic boom but i hear so many bad things i'm not sure i want to wait you've never, never played been... sonic boom and nope. you think sonic 06 is not that bad <laughs> but well, okay I, I can i will I, okay i'll go and play Sonic. Boom. i think you I, should play I... sonic boom now yeah, maybe I should. Maybe I should. I don't. I think I didn't have the console to play it on. That's why I never got it originally. And now I do have that console, but I just never picked up the I think game. That's a new so. streaming idea. Time uh, will tell. I did. I. I mean, I'm in the camp of Graham, where video game, like it's it's classic games with a theme. So I had played Legend of Zelda Monopoly, oh, um, I didn't know that which is actually it is actually nice. I do like. I do like the. The cards Did and stuff that they that created at the for Nintendo those. Store, or am I making that up in my head? No, I did not okay. get that th- at the Nintendo Store. I got that in Jesus. Was it at Walgreens? I don't know. It's one of those. <laughs> uh, but, but I got that. I mean, the Pokemon Master Trainer thing that that I I remembered. You know, twenty minutes ago, I did play that, but I completely forgot how that played. I oh, think Graham, that's are you it. doing an unboxing? What's going on right now? Oh, I, I was just looking at the back of the thing. Do, do you want oh, me to do an unboxing? It up. Eh, no, I, also, want to. I also have a Zelda-themed uh, chess uh, set. I, I do like Legend of Zelda. So okay. I got that too. I think a Zelda-themed chess set would be pretty cool, actually. Yeah. It is. It's pretty nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hmm. So do we want to go with our ideas, or the chat has a couple, actually? Um, Let, let's let's right check out the chat. Yeah. Let's have a okay. look um pun oh pun god from ohio uh says sonic in the form of clue so it was amy in the library yeah. with the plunger i like the idea um, but are we actually saying that one of the sonic characters has murdered someone uh what's going on with that okay. <laughs> yeah. this gets pretty Why dark not? pretty quickly for saying i think you can <laughs> change the premise in, in that it doesn't have to be someone killing someone uh, maybe you someone know, stolen the rings who's got the rings or the case of well, I don't, yeah, exactly, yeah. something like okay. that. Okay, yeah, that could be it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it just ends with, and then the movie just ends with Knuckles exclaiming, "Now I'm gonna go home and sleep with my wife." <laughs> uh, uh, do you guys uh, remember that movie? Oh, that's one of my. Are you favorite talking about movies. the animated? No, or the... no, there, there's one with uh, Tim Curry and a bunch of uh-huh. big names. Oh, um, the Clue, the Clue yeah, movie. Yeah, the no, Clue, the Clue movie. Whole... I thought it was next mm-hmm. to me on my shelf. I can't see it now. Never mind. Uh, but yeah, it's I'm sure movies. someone's taken that and just plastered Sonic faces on it or something <laughs> at this point in the internet. Yeah, life. I thought that's what, why you why you said Knuckle. Oh yeah, Knuckles would say that right now. I'm gonna go home and sleep with my wife. Someone, yeah. I yeah. Just, Master it's, the, it's the worst and best line in that movie. <laughs> that's so good. <laughs> um, Sonic in the form of Clue could work. I mean, it'd probably be the same thing as like the Monopoly stuff. Um, just mm. plaster a new aesthetic on there. I yeah. think Shenmue uh, works better. Who killed my yes, father? That was yeah, Landy yeah, that with the candlestick in the kitchen. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, with the hot, it was Tom with the hot dog. Um, <laughs> and then uh, Avalee says in the chat, "Mousetrap," but it's Sonic and Robotnik. So apparently, people just want more Mousetrap. Yeah, that, that's what, what we're discovered. learning today. Mousetrap oh, yeah. is is the only board game really. <laughs> That's, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'd like to see what games could be what games could be mouse tra- no, yeah what games could be mousetrap yeah <laughs> all right so Graham's creating a new YouTube series will it mousetrap <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> will it mousetrap uh, <laughs> uh, oh that's interesting that's and then cool. Avalee also says there was a Star Wars one with a VHS you played along with I could see something like that with Fantasy Star that is Ooh. Yeah. That was a phase that board games went through. They came mm. with a tape or a DVD that you like popped into the TV yeah. to play along and you I... hit play when a certain um, cutscene needed to happen or something. I, it, was I... a, it was seen it. it was, there was a movie trivia oh, called Scene. Not it. even that. Yeah, there, no, I, I'm I, talking about like. Um, I played a Star something... Trek one. Um, 
But yeah, like Probably. basically, as you go through the game, like some some of them would be actually board games, and you get to certain points, you then press play on the video. It's like, oh, now you've got to this section. Woo! Mm. Like, it's almost like there I'm was gonna, a story to go into... with the board game. It's actually pretty cool. I like might back turn in the into day, a robot as I look this up. But I did find five VHS board games that you'll that'll have you saying, "I remember that." Um, there's Wayne's World. What? Uh, somehow. Uh, let me see here. Bear with me while this loads. Wayne's World. Um, Nightmare. That's the one I was thinking of. Uh, where okay. um, you're yes. like going through a graveyard or something. The gatekeeper is the guy you interact with on the TV. Somehow there's an American funny America's funniest home videos board game. Um, <laughs> Oh man! I don't. Let me see. Oh, yeah, hit your here. sister with a rubber hammer or something and record it. Like, how does that work? Yeah. What? I guess you watch it and then you answer questions about the clips you just watched. Um, there is a Star Trek one, or the the one you mentioned, Graham. Star Trek: The Next Generation, a yes. Klingon challenge. Yes. Yeah, I think that was it. Yeah. I think I think my cousin's house. She got it for her birthday. Um, I also there was it a says, fre- Oh, sorry. No, yeah, uh, I was just going to read what it says here about it. Um, apparently, it took on the inspiration from Nightmare, but part of what kept people playing this game was the fact that it seemed downright impossible to beat Kabok, no matter how many times you played. While the sheer frustration may have kept you coming back, you probably wouldn't have bought another near-impossible game. This is probably why a sequel called Borg Q West got shelved. Like uh, Q-U-E-S-T. <sighs> Uh, and then another one they mentioned here is uh, 221, uh, or yeah, 221 B Baker Street, oh, which is I've, Sherlock's address. That's I've got that board game. It's not BHS though. Oh, I, uh, I, I, I own I own a modern version, but I also own that old version in my parents' house that did not come with VHS tape. Oh, okay, that's I interesting. There Unless there was a VHS but... tape version, because. So that that's that the board game that I have and the one I've got at my parents' house, which is the older version, they're both kind of the same thing. It's like Clue, or in the UK we call it Cluedo. Don't know why I've got a different name for it, but Cluedo. essentially you've got a murder to solve or a mystery to solve, and you have different ones though. Like they've got these cards with a little story, and um, it like it tells you the story, introduce characters and stuff, and you'll say people at these locations on the board, um, the, these events happened, and they'll be like. You have to find out who the killer is, what their motive was, and how they did it, for example. And mm-hmm. a bit like Cluedo, you, every time you go into a room, you get a clue, basically. You've got this big book of clues, and you can write it down on a piece of paper. Um, and then, but basically, you have to actually work out who, who murdered it. So it's not like in Clue where you collect cards and then you guess. You're actually literally solving a murder. And it's really, really good game, though. Like it's one of my favorite board games of all time. That's why I've got another version here and stuff. It's it's amazing. So but yeah, it comes that's... with like a book of like what is yeah. The, so is a thick book. Yeah, it's like a, so basically you have all these cards which like you pick up a card. It's like case number seventy two, and then you read out that out to everyone who's playing. You go, this is, and then oh, and then basically when you land on like um, it's got like a, a section of London basically. If you go to like the docks for example, or to the police station. Yeah. On the card, this is um, page 62 for the docs. Then you open up the book, go to page 62, or like clue number 62 even, sorry. And you read the, you read the clue and write it down, but you don't tell anyone else. But they've got like oh, some... they've got I some, played something like that. They've also got fake clues in there as well, like red herrings to throw you off the mm-hmm. scent. And there have been so many times... Oh, then basically once you think you've worked it out, you've got to race back to Sherlock's house. And then once you get there, you can announce who you think did it or whatever. And if... Um, yeah, basically, there's been a few times I've got back to the house first. I'm like, yes, I've got all the clues down. I know, I know who did it. But a couple of the fake, fake clues have completely thrown me off, and I've like I've lost. I'm like, no, it's so good, hmm. it's so good. Like, yeah, interesting. But, yeah, VHS version. I'd like, to, I'd be interested to see how that works because, yeah, smooth okay. as butter. I'm sure. Sorry. <laughs> um, let's see. I lost my train of thought. Sorry. The chat also says. Resident Evil 2 is fun. So I do need to try that at some point. I've just never, like, it showed up, like, right before a marathon happened, and I thought about trying it with the marathon crew, but as with board games like that, someone needs to have played it before to mm. walk you through yeah. the thing, I think. Um, and then uh, Pun God from Ohio also said, Sega Trivial Pursuit. So I'd, I don't know how I'd that doesn't that. already exist. I'd play that, definitely, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Although, have you ever played the Disney Trivial Pursuit? Because I thought I knew stuff about Disney, and 
I was terrible uh, at that. I was like, I can do this. Specific, I, like, who's the artist who worked on Snow White? I mean, in the some, some of world. them are, like, that ridiculous. It's really hard. I was playing with another friend who also loves Disney. We were both like, this is one of the hardest games we've ever played. <laughs> like, I think we have it downstairs, he said, wearing his Aladdin shirt. But Rachel <laughs> is a, a super Disney fan, so. Oh, wow. It. Yeah. <clears throat> Did you guys play so, Villainous, by the way? So mm, what, what's that? Mm, is Villainous is that... Disney themed, so you basically play as the Disney villains, oh. and they each have their own goal they have to reach. So everyone's a villain, and then you have to reach your goal first. Ooh. Um, it's actually pretty fun. So you should look that up. Yeah, I'll check that Villainous. out. Um, so we thought of our own uh, games to make to we thought of our own ways to turn Sega games or franchises into board games. Um, Mine is pretty fleshed out, so I can go last if you guys want me to. Um, I mean, I've got some. Produce? I've got a lot of notes for mine, but well, for oh, my, okay. first, my first <laughs> option, but I just haven't got them on the on the outline. Um, so I, don't, I don't mind. Uh, uh, you know what? I'll, how about I'll I'll go first because one of mine is already one that people have discussed, and yours is much more fleshed out, Scotty. And I want to I want to hear that because I'm yeah let's do Scotty a big last. Shamu fan. Yeah, let's do you last. Yeah. Uh, so honestly, I like I think that you can translate Sonic Shuffle into an actual physical board game. Mm-hmm. There were some people earlier in the chat who agreed with me because mm-hmm. they also suggested Sonic Shuffle. Um. I think in in the instance of mini games, though, because it, it'd be kind of hard to do that unless we do like a hybrid, how they did VHS tapes, you pop in, <laughs> I don't know, the Sonic Shuffle game on Dreamcast. Yeah, I was gonna I, th- I was gonna touch on this, but keep keep talking. But I will touch on that point with another game that I played board game. So yeah, honestly, I think you can combine, you know, like maybe that that Sega or Sonic trivia with it instead, and just use that as 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 the uh, replacement for mini games. Is just you you answer a question essentially, and then you have. You know, spaces have that have different effects. I think you can you can do the keep the ring theme where you're going on blue or red and then you get rings taken or, or added <clears throat> and that adds to your score on top of the amount of answers you got uh correct and i don't know how how, how i would figure out the, the precious stone thing but I, I, w- I would like to see the uh the boards that there were in the game you know just recreated as a, like a flat map i think that'd be kind of cool um, but you, you're, you know, you know, we're not flooding any boards. We're not, you know, changing anything. Nothing crazy is happening. I think maybe like that one corner where there's the spring. I think you know you can include that in there. Um, but yeah, Graham, I don't, I don't know what you, what you thought about that. So, so I don't know if I don't know if this was a TV show in America at all. But do you guys ever have the Crystal Maze over there? That sounds like a drug. Okay. <laughs> I, don't so, know, I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe we might have. In the know. UK in the 90s, and it's actually come back with a different presenter re- more recently, but basically there was a uh, game show basically where they, like a team, I think, of six people, they would go in something called The Crystal Maze. And it was like basically it was like a big studio set um, with different regions. Like there'd be like a medieval zone, a futuristic zone, a, a pyramid zone, for example. And they'd go to, they'd literally go into these rooms one person at a time. And they'd have to like do some sort of activity or puzzle or something. But they'd, they'd be physically challenging and stuff. Like one of them might oh. be just running across like a, a log across above water to get these little crystals. And each crystal basically earns some time in something called like the crystal dome. But if you fail at the the, the task, you get locked in the room. Um, and people could the, your team can buy you back using a crystal, but they may not want to because that crystal helps them later in the game. Um, and then at the very end, they get all the crystals they've earned. They go into the big crystal dome. They get to collect these little token things, and then they can win a prize. Basically, um, it's a really, really good show. But they made a board game of it, and the board game actually physically had these little um, like games, like mini games that you could play. Like there'd be one with like a little crane. So you had to have a little plastic crane thing. You got to like pick up rocks or something. There was there's quite a few of them. There was actually like a really good selection of them. And it's what it's a brilliant board game. I've I've got it in my parents' house somewhere. I don't I haven't actually played it for a while, but that th- when you talk about Sonic Shuffle, I was thinking, yes, you could do like trivia questions and stuff like that and some, some other things, but I think you could have some sort of little 
little physical mini things that you can actually play with because Crystal Maze did it and they did it really well. So, because it actually kind of actually adds a physical challenge to a board game. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm going to check that out. Yeah. Oh, Happy Dude, yeah, Atero Happy Dude has said he Crystal Maze is on YouTube and I've binged the head out of it. So, yeah, there you nice. go. Nice. It's it's a great TV show, but uh, especially the old like nineties ones. That sounds like, um, that oh. sounds like Legends of the Internet. Oh, sorry, I I just remembered some some reference you might know. Um, I don't know, I've just forgot the name of the movie. Damn it! Oh, no, don't worry. It's no. Carry on, carry on. <laughs> I was going to say the name of a movie that the an actor in one of the movies is actually the presenter of the old version, and I can't remember the name of the movie now. So, uh, damn it. Anyway. Well, if you remember it, you can you can yeah bring it. Um, the other oh. thing that I mentioned, uh, do you remember now? Graham? I just did, yeah. The Rocky Horror Picture Show. Have you guys seen that? The movie. What? The Rocky Horror <laughs> yeah. Picture Show. Yeah. So the there's a guy, the guy who actually directed it, and he's actually in the movie. He's like a the bald guy. Like I think he's like a the server or something. He he's the guy who um made the Crystal Maze and has presented the Crystal Maze as well. Oh nice. But he's the guy who also directed the Rocky Horror Picture Show and, and was in it as well. Um, but yeah, anyway, carry on. <laughs> God, sorry, <laughs> sorry. This uh, this uh, bit of trivia. This hmm. box art for Crystal Maze is seventies as fuck. Yeah, Richard O'Brien. Sorry, happy dude H two O H two O. Happy dude. Thank you. Yeah, Richard O'Brien. Thank you the for being a wingman. Gotcha. Crystal <laughs> Maze. Oh, oh, I gotta check that out. Hmm. Yeah, there's the. Uh, I'll send you. Nope, no, I didn't. I linked you. Get... No, I didn't. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> sent it out on Twitter. Damn it! There you go. There's the picture of the box. Um, that sounds interesting. And Ooh. It's a show, but it started as a board game. Well, the, wow, the... the ratings aren't that good. I mean, there were 53 ratings on on Board Game Geek, but they don't like it. What's that? that Four point seven. Probably because they're dressed like Tron characters. I don't know. Wow, those are actually a different yeah. machine like piece. Anyway, yeah, don't, that's cool. Um, I love it. Brilliant. Um, sorry, I completely forgot. So, you're saying Sonic Shuffle board game. That's that's what you're talking about, Marcin. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, and yeah, I do agree that your addition would <laughs> would make it much more interesting. Um, the other thing that I w that I thought about was a Yakuza board game. Mm. And I was I was debating on how how that would work because I feel like you can take different angles to it because you know in the in the game itself there are different mini games that I think can translate well into it. I think the construction portion of uh, Kiwami Two, and I think it's in Yakuza Six. Uh, I think it can work well in the style of uh, Battleship, but I also think you can also it. Uh, in the style of Dungeons and Dragons, where you have uh, you have your characters and your figurines, and then you you basically move throughout the board. You have your you know your items and objects that you you know you put throughout the map, and then you know you you basically uh, create a story around it. You can you know you can attack uh, the the enemy, and I feel like that'd be interesting. Um, okay. And also, I mean, also it, it, Yakuza, the the most recent one, it's it's kind of turn based. So I think you can also d basically take Dungeons and Dragons and and you know make it a, make a Yakuza game out of it. I think that would be super fun. But uh, yeah, I think that that's, that's cool. the extent of mine. I don't cool. know, Graham, you want to go next? So yeah, I've got a couple. Um, so. One of them is so, as someone actually mentioned earlier, Jet Set Radio, and their idea is kind of one of the. I so I've got two kind of ideas for it, but their idea was that essentially you take over, they like, take control of the major majority of territories on the board, and then that's kind of how you win. Um, I, uh, so I thought that could be quite a cool one, a bit like Risk in a way that you sort of take over the boards like by tagging areas and stuff, um, or there could be a teamwork one where everyone goes around to specific parts of the board to tag them. And there could be, um, so I was thinking there could be like cards you could pick up along the way that maybe represent spray cans. So you could be able to tag, and maybe when you get to a tagging spot, you have to roll a dice, um, which equates to the number of cans you might need. So if there's kind of like a strategy to try and like save up cans, I was thinking like 
you have to go to certain parts of the board to actually collect cans and stuff. Maybe there could be some other element to collecting cans, like uh, questions or something. I don't know. Um, but should... also, maybe there could be like um, cards you turn over which like have police on them, for example. So like the police are after you, so you have to like move away or something. Um, yeah, so things can be collected on certain squares. But I think that could be kind of a kind of a fun board game in a way. Um, yeah, maybe like the teamwork one could work, but the rivals one, you could each should be to the different gangs. Like you could be the GGs, or I've forgotten all the names of the other gangs. But you know, there's lots of different noise tanks, poison jam, thank you, talkers. yeah, all those, all all that lot, everyone, keep them coming, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but um, but maybe there could also be um, like shortcuts across the board or something like that you can grind on, for example, like little a bit like. Um, I think you guys call it shoots and ladders, but in the UK we call it snakes and ladders. Like when you it's get the same on, like thing. yeah, uh, like if you go on a, a shoot, you go like all the way to the bottom. There could be like grinding rails across the board that like let you get from one point to another point to be able to get there a bit quicker. But maybe it's risky. I don't know. Maybe you have to roll a dice to see if you can balance well enough on the grinding pole. Um, there could be a lot of elements to it, but I figured that could be kind of an interesting game. And um... Oh, sorry. Yeah. I was going to suggest two things to add to that. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing, when you get to a part where you have to spray graffiti, is you could um, have a little timer that you hit, and maybe it's got like 10 seconds, Ooh. and if you get that, then you complete it, and you have more points. Or if you don't, then that's when the cops have run up to you and like bombarded yeah, you. That's and um, maybe for that as well. But I don't know which would work better if you like rolled a couple die, and like depending on your experience, maybe you roll more die to get a higher uh, total to successfully tag something or yeah. i mean since it is you know you're incorporating different designs and art and whatever maybe you have to pick up a random topic and then there's a notepad and you have to draw something in 10 seconds and that's your graffiti <laughs> and you like slap that, it down before the cops get you that could mm -hmm. be that could no that's a brilliant element yeah actually physically drawing something like on a piece of paper and we're like yeah i've done it like yeah like draw a yeah, cash okay spray, uh. and spray this out of your house yeah yeah <laughs> and then you put your ar goggles on yeah and then then you get the mouse oh, trap that comes down and... <laughs> you have to hook up the connect real fast oh i hope you have a connect <laughs> <laughs> oh man but how can we get vhs tape involved in this that's what i need to know um mm. <laughs> bad idea oh boy yeah <laughs> It's got to have mousetrap and VHS involved. That's that's all we know about board games now. Those are all the two things that made it successful. Right. Yeah, no right. one's got a VHS tape. Almost nobody. <laughs> powders, yeah, well, powders. I was gonna say, yeah, we can't. We, yeah. <laughs> uh, you could also incorporate cell phones into it somehow, though, too. So you could maybe have hmm. like you put your design on your phone, and then oh, I can upload these and make a shirt out of it. I don't know. I don't know if yeah. you guys. Played uh, the Jackbox games, so they do a great job of using your mobile phone mm. as a yeah. multiplayer thing. They got TKO, and you basically draw your own shirt designs on there, and then you oh, you pit them one. against other people. It's actually pretty good. Okay, that'd be pretty. Yeah, yeah. I've I've played some of the Jackbox stuff, but yeah, I haven't played that specific one. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I played the crap out of TKO, uh, and I do have a shirt made from TKO as well. Sweet. Uh, yeah. I'll awesome. have to show it off later. It's it's nice. hilarious. Um, uh, uh, and another game I thought could work, but I have no idea of the rules, would be Streets of Rage. Uh, but that's more just there... thinking. I like Streets of Rage. I'd be awesome to have a board game. <laughs> I thought there was a Streets of Rage board game. Oh my or god! Something. Is there? Let's let's right. There may be a, there may be another pickup to add to Streets of Steel. What? That's not Streets of Rage. That. <laughs> It, it, yeah. it basically is just they couldn't name it Streets of Rage. Yeah, it was a Kickstarter thing. Um, I think it's come and gone already. I'm probably going to turn into a robot because I'm trying to load a web page right now. Um, let's see when this campaign ended. Uh, oh, damn. Yeah, they got... Okay, I do recognize this now. They Their pledge goal was 32000 They got 83000 So Holy shit. There's money in Streets of Rage. <laughs> yep. Well, yeah, it's everyone's realized problem, that so. except for Sega. Oh, you Streets can pre-order it now. Oh, um, interesting. Let's yeah, here, out. I'll... Uh, I'll. Holy shit, that's not what I wanted. Um, oh my god, yeah, this is, this is... Yeah, this is Streets of Rage in a board game. This is amazing. Yep. I'll toss it into the Twitch chat uh, so people can see that as well, the, how well the Kickstarter did. And you can just straight up get the game. Um, so I'm sure next time we're at Chris's place, he'll force us to play this. So 
<laughs> that is the game. Yeah, there we go. That could be cool. So, so one Maybe. game I've thought of has already been made. So I don't even need to think of the concept. Brilliant. Uh, I'll just take the royalties, please. Yeah. <laughs> you, if you come up with an idea after it's been done, that that works, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yes. If you, you you didn't know it existed, I think I think that counts. Yeah. <laughs> Not in my reality, Jack. <laughs> oh man. Um, so Scotty, you've got a you've got an idea or two, haven't you? Yeah, so I thought to make Shenmue into a board game, and I think it could be a co-op game. Tell me more. And you have, you play as Ryu, nope, Ryo. Yeah. You play as uh, Fukusan, um, Naomi, and I couldn't think of one more character to make it four Nozomi, player. Nozomi, Guizan, Nozomi. Joy, Well, Wendy. I was I was limiting this to the first game. Um, okay. And uh because i think the second one you could definitely make it into something else but um it'll make more sense my idea keeping it just uh because the first game is a lot smaller than the second one oh, yeah. um but uh so this is gonna get extensive um the first thing that i thought is it could come with a black light so that you could put that in a lamp nearby and turn it to oh, nighttime for the nighttime cycles <laughs> um uh... what'd you say I said not in my bedroom. Um, <laughs> so, anyway, so, someone had to say. So, <laughs> what was so? What do you do with the black light exactly? Um, you just—it's really just an atmospheric thing. You just turn it on so that it's nighttime in the game uh, to keep the day and night cycle going. Could, oh, nice. could, could um, somehow things show up on the board that are not there on, in the yeah, daytime maybe. version? That'd be cool. Yeah. Again, don't uh, things you don't want to find. Um, <laughs> But uh, so I, I was going to say, so the way that it works, each person has their character card and also their their wallet, essentially, because every um, we'll say every 30 minutes, people get money, get your allowance from Inisan so that like a day goes by or something so that it keeps the kind of progression because you do kind of need that with what I'm going to get into here. Um, mm -hmm. Overall, though, it's a co-op game where you're collecting clues to get to the next scenario. Um, okay. So the the board itself would be the village uh, that I can't remember the name of now. Dobuita. Um, I mean, Yokosuka yeah. is is the whole area, but the, like the Dobuita area is like the the town that he goes in, like the main yeah. town. Yeah, because that's where I'll, you have to repeat a lot of things and go to different bars and restaurants and mm -hmm. locations. So we'll go with that main part. Um, and then eventually, though, when you all progress to the harbor, it'll flip over and you'll use the harbor as the main game mat. Um, oh, nice. But so what it is, so each person has their journal, they have their scrolls that they learn, and they have their Gashupon. So you can still win by the end with your own points and Gashupon things gathered, gathered and your money as well. Um, but what it is, let me get all my notes up here. Um, so yeah, I think every 30 minutes, you could it'll be like one day passes. This is going to be a long game, so get comfortable. <laughs> but every 30 minutes is one day's time, so that that way you gradually get more money, you can get more Gashupon. Um, and this will probably come with some sort of timer. So maybe it's not exactly 30 minutes, but, or you come, have an hourglass or something, you know, that comes with the game. Um, so what will happen though, is you can roll and you walk around the town. There's no real order or anything to go in, but the main point of it though, is to get journal entries and they're going to come in each different colors, like red, yellow, green. So red is like a minor journal entry, which might just be something like talk to Chinese people and that's it. And, but then. <laughs> <laughs> like the yellow version, the yellow version of that is it could be find someone who can translate Chinese. Yeah. And like the green version of that might be go to this restaurant, the owner speaks Chinese and can translate this thing. So you have like different types of progressive clues. That's um, cool. And so the way that it would work, though, you know, you want it to be a co-op because you're all trying to find Lon D. So in that aspect, everybody upgrades their journal as they get those different things. But mm. you'll be like sectioned off so that we can't progress to this next like we can't find the tattoo parlor until everybody gets this type of clue and then we can all progress to that area um and so that's how you get through there so that that way you're going to flip the board over to the harbor once everybody's figured out oh i need to get a job and earn money to pay wow. for my trip to uh china um oh there yeah. you earn scrolls there's this Scott, scotty you froze you froze for a few seconds I thought you just thought for a really long time. I'm like, wait. <laughs> what was the last thing I said? Um, 
It was about flipping over the board and stuff. Yeah. Okay, so that's how you put progress, and so that way you wouldn't just flip over the board for like two of the four people playing or something. You flip it over after everybody gets this thing, realizing, oh, I need to earn money and get a day job to afford my trip to China. So, um, but there's three decks overall that you have uh, off, uh, not on the board, but you have things that you land on to draw from these decks. So there's the practice deck, which means you practice and earn scrolls to earn moves. There's the Gashupon deck, where you just buy Gashapon and they literally serve no purpose other than adding to your collection and your overall score. So they actually do serve more of a purpose sure. in this game than they do in the real game. Yeah. Um, and then the last thing is the journal deck, which is where you'll put your clues. And okay. so it'll it each of those types of clues, I mentioned the red, yellow, green, like the green will be worth the most points, um, but the reds you can also f kind of find easier but they're not really progressive at all but you can get points you can kind of hoard the points but it won't be worth as much as the green etc um but so but with the press with the practice decks and earning scrolls the more scrolls you earn the more dice you can roll when you get into fights uh -huh. so you'll when you have yeah. different qtes yeah i've put a lot of thought into wow. this yeah. um when you have qtes those will, uh, depending on how many scrolls you have, that'll determine how many dice you roll. So it might be running through the market, or it might be fighting a bunch of thugs, or just, like, the first QTE, you're going to have one die you can roll, and it's to block that little girl from getting hit in the face with a ball. So, <laughs> you know, you might have a good enough uh, chance of rolling. If you don't, then maybe you'll lose points or lose money or something like that. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so fights will require rolls. Uh, QTEs will require rolls, and I mentioned the more scrolls you have, the more dice you can roll. Um, and then also, when you get to the harbor, every day starts with a forklift race, which could just be just everybody just rolls their die at the same time, and whoever gets the most wins the forklift race and like gets money or something like that, or okay. yeah. or, or maybe another Gashupon added to your pile. Um, and let's see, that's mainly what I had though. But overall, you all have to kind of progress together since it's a co-op game. Um, and you kind of collect all these things. But at the end, you can total up your points between the Gashupon, the scrolls you've earned, the journal entries you've earned to see who gets the most points to win. Okay. So there's I'm one thing I am slightly hazy, hazy on is um, the, the clue cards. How do you get the different clue cards? Like It would so. just be a spot you land on. Same with the uh, Gashupon or like a QTE. Event uh, and was that maybe like in front of a storefront maybe it says like you know collect card or but does that dictate the actual color of the card or uh it'll be random you there's three decks you have the scroll deck you have the practice deck the okay. gossip deck and the journal deck and you just pick a card up so it's random what uh journal entry you get what type of journal right. entry um but there will be times where because because this happens in the game also you kind of learn where to go to get to get an actual like progressive note in your journal to just bypass tons of nonsense right. um so there will be certain like maybe tom's hot dog stand is the place you can go and then you go through the journal deck until you definitely get a green like you can and then maybe shuffle it or whatever but there'll be certain parts where you can either like go to the journal or maybe if you um go back home and talk to eni son and um uh, and then maybe that'll get you a guaranteed uh progressive more progressive like a green thing rather than something else okay does that make sense i think so yeah i'm really liking this idea in general in the whole i'm actually really liking it yeah the overall concept i think is quite interesting i think yeah. we should just make a game called revenge story the board game yeah and put on a kickstarter revenge story <laughs> or who, who can take down d lan and you can be called <laughs> oyer or like rio backwards or something <laughs> It's not Dragon Mirror. That's I don't know. <laughs> China plates. I don't know. You should <laughs> collective. You should. Yeah, collective dragon plates. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, that's, that's really my idea good. overall. Thanks. No, so, I think yeah. we should put this shit on Kickstarter. Yeah, no, I'm, yeah. I. Some we. Right, someone, someone get on the phone to Sega and just or just start or just ask for the rights or get the name. I don't like, know. Yeah, I who knows more, how to make um, more games. Yeah, I've played more co-op board games than competitive a lot lately, so, so that that helped with that. I've never played a co-op board game in my life, so at least that, that I'm sure you have. I, I can't think of any I've played, but uh, yeah. Did you have you played any at, at at Chris's place when he when when you've been there? Just hanging I out didn't or even know I'm that sure Chris owned a board game. game. 
Like, oh my god, that, it was all about making us play mixtape massacre when we were there. I, I didn't even know that. Um, no, he, that, that was not offered to me. He must they, like you guys more. I don't know. Well, not enough to get Marson involved because he slept through it or something. <laughs> I, I must have played it. I just like blocked it out of my memory some, for some reason. I, I, I remember. I do remember vaguely. I do vaguely remember the board game. Yeah, because they were they were like they were knockoffs. Mm. Yeah. 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 Um, Pun God from Ohio says Resident Evil Two is co-op. Uh, I unfortunately have never yeah. played any of the Resident Evil board games, so I want to play. It's just like eighty six dollars, but like I, yeah, I keep buying other board games, which adds up to definitely eighty dollars. <laughs> so, yeah, well, that horrified playing. one that you got last week, you mentioned that's co-op. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, I guess that that would be considered co-op. Yeah, I wasn't sure. Like I wasn't sure. Well, I guess pandemic is is co-op because you all work yeah. together to you know get rid of the diseases across the globe so yeah mm -hmm. I, I played a handful oh there's one game which is technically co-op which i have played but i can't remember what it's called but literally the thing is you've got you've got some cards in your hand which all have different numbers on and you ha without saying anything you've each got to lay down the cards um in, in order of number like increasing order of number and it's up to 100 cards or something in the deck but you all have random numbers and you just got to try and do it without saying anything. And it sounds ridiculous, but it's actually a really fun board. Like it's not a board game technically, it's a card game. But that's the probably the only card no. game I know of. And each time after three rounds or something, you get after each round you get more cards. But then after three rounds you get an extra life. So there's kind of lives involved. So once you run out of lives, you actually go you have to go straight back to the beginning again. It's I, I don't remember the name of it. I can't remember what it's called. My friend introduced it to me. And that's kind <laughs> of a co op board game, but it's not a board game, really. It's a card game. Ah. Oh, well. Anyway. We had, um, yeah, thank you guys for digging that, though. I hmm. I feel like it could get made. Um, yeah. I, 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 I want to try and design this. Let's, let's, get, let's, get, let's do this. Let's get some. There is a dedicated sure. Shinmu fan base. So I guarantee if we came up with it, we would get a successful Kickstarter. Yeah. Find the right people to talk to, and uh, can we talk to um, using the Shenmue name? Uh, yeah, Avali did have one other comment in here uh, for another board game. So different concepts: Sonic or something ages, but four boards that teleport you between them to reach the end goal of Robotnik. Each board has a different mechanic based on the age in time. So I don't know if that would mean like Master System board, Genesis Mega Drive, Saturn, Dreamcast, okay. like that kind of idea or something. That'd be interesting. Like uh, generations. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that could be interesting. Yeah, that could be something. Um, hmm. Yeah, but that's my idea. We've got some ideas. We we want to. Uh, if anybody knows who we need to talk to to get these to happen, yeah, we're going to get some some people <laughs> on this thing. Yeah, it's, it's, I wonder if Danny Russell knows knows the uh, licensing people. So okay, let's get sure. him. Yeah, <laughs> um, and Pam. Pungon from Ohio says he's heard of that card game that I mentioned, um, but he hasn't told but us. But he doesn't know the name either. Damn no, it! <laughs> it doesn't have a name. One of those <laughs> but, games. It, but when, like, uh, yeah. Anyway, it's it's actually a genuinely fun game. I think it's not very. It's inexpensive. It's a fun game to play with people. Uh, yeah. It's one of those games. that's just you think that sounds really weird and not very good, but when you play, it, it's really addictive. Um, yeah, I can't. I can't think what it's called though. Uh, anyway. Yeah, so I guess that kind of, unless there's any other comments, but uh, I guess that kind of does it for that feature and for this week's show. So, mm -hmm. um, Scotty, I don't know if you want to line up. Um, uh, someone's I'm looking. To raid. Perfect. Uh, I'm if looking. someone's playing Mousetrap, happily, let's, let's raid them. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, Marcin, have we got any um, site or magazine news that you want to shout out about or anything like that? Uh, just, just check out, you know, the latest news posts that we've been sharing out. There's one we did about a, a person who makes custom game gears. Mm. Uh, so you guys should check out megavisionsmag.com where we post all our news and reviews. And also don't forget to follow us on Patreon slash megavisions. If you're joining us on Twitch for the first time, don't forget to follow us on Twitch. And I think that's that's all the housekeeping for me. Brilliant. Cool. Scotty, have you got any housekeeping or you're all good? Um, we stream on a, a good bit of days out of the week. Um, Mondays we're doing stuff. Um, 
Wednesdays, I'm going to come back to streaming solo. I'm going to do Xeno Cider and use the oh, twin yeah. stick. Nice. Um, so I'll have two cameras set up, one on my face and another one on the sticks. Uh, that should be interesting. And um, Thursday night throwdowns, I will be absent. But I think Corey was talking about playing Mad World to follow up our, our thing of Anarchy Reigns last week. Um, so that might happen. Uh, otherwise, and then Friday, Graham, either you or you and Chris have been streaming stuff. Do you have anything slated coming up? Um, so, I mean, actually, last week I was meant to also play Xeno Cider because I played it the week before. But sadly, uh, yeah, I actually fell asleep really early. I fell asleep at like nine o'clock my time and we get on at like 11 for, to stream that my time so uh yeah i think this week hopefully i'll be streaming some more dreamcast stuff um or chris and i will be on with halo again like doing the legendary mode um co-op and uh, nice. just very quickly pun god thank you that game i was talking about is called the mind like, oh like the, okay. Like okay the mind do, 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 do. I'm glad we got an answer that because yes. that was gonna bother me i was gonna yeah. be in descriptions next to my yakuza chicken search term and, and apparently it has um, a rabbit on the box uh so interesting yeah check it out if you can but yeah um hopefully i'll be back streaming this friday uh possibly some dreamcast stuff um yeah cool so yeah scotty have you found something to raid no nobody's uh, playing sonic shuffle big shock everybody's doing tabletop <laughs> simulator but it's i can't tell what they're actually playing uh, um good so we will still find and none of our buddies are really streaming right now. Sunday seems to be the slow day. Uh, so let me let me try one more. I'm just going to type in Sonic. Let's just see what happens. Um, let's get a Sonic, the, that night game. Let's let's raid oh, one of Sonic those. Sonic and the Black Knight. Yeah. Oh, okay. Let me find that. that or um, Sonic 06 yeah. or Sonic and the Secret Rings. One of those. No one was streaming <laughs> Sonic 06. No one's streaming Sonic, Sonic and the Black Knight. Uh, let me see here. Okay. Sonic and the Secret Rings. I'm sure. Nope. Nobody's streaming that. Uh, okay. Let's do. Let's try Sonic and Knuckles. This is very. I'm sure incredibly <laughs> interesting for somebody. Uh, nothing. Sonic and Knuckles. Someone's streaming it, but it doesn't look like it's anything we want to be part of. Uh, <laughs> Sonic. Uh, um well let me try one other thing here sonic the hedgehog uh we'll try just sonic the hedgehog again and see if someone's wow. doing a non-streaming a sonic game that's no 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 i didn't say that uh yeah. there are plenty of people streaming sonic games but streaming gotta... good sonic games oh not, yeah, not the ones the we want to see yeah oh, that's man. the hell yeah okay someone's no playing games. we'll just we'll just raid someone playing sonic adventure we got uh meggers here is playing Sonic Adventure, so we'll cool. go ahead and so yeah, give them some love, everybody. Uh, we're gonna hop over to their stream, hang out with them, tell them what we were doing, and um, yeah, Th thanks, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and be excellent to each other. Oh, I am gonna be doing some unboxings, just follow it, hop in. Oh my god, we didn't do this. Look, here's what we need to do right now. If you dig what we were talking about, hop in the Discord, gotta keep doing that Ooh, yeah. stuff. There so, you go. so, perfect, anyway. Let's go hang out with Megers, everybody, and have a good Sunday. Cheers. Honey, I got to tell you about this sandwich. Yeah, but, did you say the cat <laughs> feeds a baby or eats the baby? The cat eats the baby with a silver spoon. <laughs> yeah, that's not how it goes. It's a kid's have you, song. Have you guys never watched the Goldbergs? Oh, oh no. I have, I have not <laughs> but seen But they made a spoof out of it. I'm there's many um, of them. There was... Um, the, so the the main kid's uncle, so the, the dad's brother, is like yeah. He's they don't really get along. The dad and the is that they, the one with the DeLorean or whatever? I can't. I, he might have a DeLorean. I can't. He's got some sort of crap. I don't know. Anyway, but like the, the he doesn't the, have a real job or something. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the uncle's a bit of a dropout and a bit of an idiot and stuff. And um, the dad's favorite song is that song. Um, you know, because um, it it, bring, it evokes real emotion in him or something about like. Um, the love between a father and a child or something and um the uncle's like no it's not it's got nothing to do with that and he's, and he's like yeah it does the lyrics say it and the, the uncle starts singing the cat eats a baby with a silver spoon he's like that's not the words <laughs> <laughs>